All right, take two. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we got a really freaking special show for you today. So without any further ado, I'm going to take my technically challenged ass and get out of this room and turn it over to the hosts, Brian and Marco. Take it away, guys. Yeah, uh, happy Wednesday to you guys. Uh, you know, Living Soil Nerds, we apologize. We were over, I guess, in a, another atmosphere uh, just talking to each other for a while. So uh, like you said, take two on this. Um, a, a few things have happened, obviously, for this show to, to happen today. Uh, one of those, Organic Alexa, just wanted to give a shout out to her. Uh, she was our guest today, and unfortunately, she fell ill. Uh, so we just wanted to, uh, you know, reach out to her that hopefully we can have her back on the show. Because I feel like, uh, again, we're just trying to get a lot of uh, diverse individuals to come on the show, uh, learn from that those um you know, experiments, uh, mistakes and that kind of stuff uh, and move forward. Uh, one of the people that I've learned um, from, a, I feel like for a long time is our special guest today, uh, somebody that I obviously admire and, and I have no shame in doing so, uh, Duke Diamond. Uh, I did want to start off the show real quick with uh, just this fundraiser that we were able to have because of Peter, because of the platform. Uh, Duke, unfortunately, when you were uh, away, uh, obviously COVID hit, man, and the the channel blew up for Peter. And I feel like he put in a ton of work to be able to get to this point. Now, obviously, things are growing where we have Chad, uh, just a lot of more shows coming on. I remember at the beginning, uh, uh, I think it was in 2020, Peter was talking about how he wanted this to kind of be like the ESPN of, uh, the, of cannabis. Uh, and I think he's really starting to achieve that goal. So this is going to be a, a real treat, I feel like, for the, the more and more people that are starting to understand cannabis that might not necessarily have kind of seen uh, the way things have shaped in, in, in a long time, uh, especially the last few years. A lot of things have changed pretty dramatically. Uh, so I did want to again, you know, obviously shout out to Peter and the platform uh, putting things together. Uh, Propane Jane. Uh, Miss Montana behind the scenes, uh, just kind of being the glue sometimes to, uh, to make sure that that things were correct. Um, and I, then I want to give a super special shout out to uh, Robbie with Nerd Genetics. I feel like that dude always holds it down. Uh, he's definitely one of those that's, uh, you know, a, a real one. Uh, that's something that I feel like, Duke, a lot of people use when they describe you, sir. Uh, it's just a real one. And that's all they really have to say about you, because I feel like then, you know, your reputation, your reputation reputation and the way you carry yourself really handles and goes a long way. Um, like I was saying before the take two with this, I kind of really got into that because uh, the way you carry yourself, man, the way that things, the things are, that's how people would respect one another. And that is lost, especially in these last few years. So I feel like, again, uh, we want to have a platform where we can talk to people that uh, are true to their word. Uh, and, and the last person I really want to thank uh, throughout, especially these last few months, is Sticky Lungs. That's another dude that just is always tried and true, uh, always coming through uh, on it for a variety of individuals. So just wanted to start that out, man, because there's a lot of uh, bullshit going on, uh, kind of hate. There was even some uh, bullshit that I saw with Emerald Cup. Um, I kind of wanted to take it there. But then at the same time, I, I, I kind of wanted to explain why I feel like, Duke, you're you're going you're going places on, on a high on, on another level uh, because you were able to explain things to the community for a long time before you went away. Uh, and that is not forgotten among the community. Uh, you've been on a variety of other podcasts, and I feel like there's a lot of things to, to learn from that. Um, and I hope that we're going to be able to dive deeper into that. I'm also excited to officially introduce you to my co-host, Marco. Uh, I feel like Marco is another one of those that... Um, carries himself as as kind of like the the old school thinking individual i know og's super overplayed now but uh, just somebody that is uh you know carries himself in a way that i feel like other people will begin to respect because it is genuine and it is giving uh, and that is something that duke i feel like you're famous for man um and it's just uh, you know it's going to be exciting for the community that that you know might not necessarily have heard of your work have heard of your story uh to see from uh, another example of uh, there's not too many uh, of you and, and certain people like you that it seems like is left. So I feel like we need to have a, a more of a voice in a community. And it feels like there's a, a fork in the road for a lot of that kind of stuff. Do we kind of carry on certain traditions and things in the way that we carried ourselves? Or do we all try to play one another and uh, tell on one another? And, 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 and the other stuff is kind of reveal certain things uh, that maybe, you know, you were you know true boys back in the day or something. So they know something really personal about you. And then something happens and they run and tell everybody about that. Uh, I just didn't see that. I know that, you know, maybe this is more, you know, 
us being more Southerners, maybe there's more like the word is your bond compared to other parts of the country. I, I could totally see that. But it seems like it's uh, eroding nationwide. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, to start the show is is Emerald Cup. <clears throat> I feel like when you first went out there in 2017, uh, that was kind of like your uh, Cinderella moment. And I just kind of wanted to start there uh, and then dive into a lot of things. Uh, shout out to another podcast, the the Dunn Show. I, I have, you know, we've all heard you on there on a few times. And before we were able to get on this uh, live and officially running here, uh, Chad and I were talking about a gentleman named Mitch Sanasa. And, and I feel like he was somebody that um, really took the time to kind of in the interview, especially with with yourself and others, uh, really break things down and then um, break it down for the layman. Basically, that, that is the one thing that I feel like you're, you're really able to do, man. Um, and without doing it with like, you know, going out of your way to use big words to make yourself sound cool or look cool. <laughs> uh, that's just yeah. something that I know that you don't give a fuck about, man. And, and I'm. I'm just excited that we're going to be able to talk about that from from a general standpoint. So let's talk about yeah, it. definitely. Hey, and before we get to... too far into it, man, um, I want to jump in and say, man, just what's up, Duke? Nice to meet you, brother. Finally, get yeah. to heard lots of stuff about you, and um, I think that a lot of what Brian's talking about, man. Um, I didn't know you were from Virginia, brother. I was kind of been doing my thing in my own little dungeon, um, coming out now and uh, and meeting all these great people, man. And your name that um. A lot of folks have a ton of respect for and um you know to find out you're from va man you know va don't play but we're very respectful we're very we, we approach you very easy and yeah. um and we and and we take it from there um yeah. so yeah man awesome awesome to have this talk with you bro and uh and looking forward to just hearing what you got to say yeah it's great great to meet you too man and um i always used to people people like man y'all are so laid back i'm like yeah we're laid back we're chill until we're not so like you know like we're we're real cool you know but people you know fuck around put us in that position it's like get a zero to a hundred real quick real rowdy real quick real rowdy <laughs> so, but yeah that's you know that's a good good way uh good way to be for sure man and I, you know all the people that helped out during that time like i said propane jane um nerds you know robbie at nerds and all the other folks that made it happen you know can't thank you enough and i think so those are real real people you know and uh you know that's what you know ideally like <clears throat> you try to surround yourself uh by man it's crazy like i got this one guy who will not stop dming like literally every 10 seconds i got like a window that literally pops up like right here in front of my eyes and it's like jesus man please just give me a moment pretty please trying to do this thing <laughs> but um yeah um so yeah and i guess like talking about like emerald cup evolution right um things are always changing um especially in the world uh the world that we live in you know where I, I even hate saying industry but in one regard or another like you're you got to be involved with it, even if it's like from the outside, like no matter what, like you're associated with it <clears throat> in one one regard or another. So even if it's just, you know, observing what's going on around you. So as far as like how it evolved, like I was super stoked to go to that first one because I know people who had been involved in it, gone to it, the great people, the vibe and everything. And I was like, yeah, well, that's really cool. Like, that's what I like to, to be around, you know? And, you know, we always, you know, we try to surround ourselves with good, solid people. And, you know, these people are, you know, bringing you, bringing you into to their little gig. So I go, and it was exactly, exactly what, what I thought it was and what I was told it was. And it was an awesome thing. It was an awesome thing to be a part of, awesome thing to, to see. Um... That, if I'm not mistaken, that was the year that they were that they were trying to do, um, you know, the, the the recreation legalization there, and that's when it all hit the fan, man. Like you start getting money and things like that involved with anything, it tends to uh, it tends to ruin it. Good intentions go away, uh, greed will kind of take over, and it starts to happen on the most basic of levels like people 
that were down, like really down as fuck, making things happen. They see their opportunity. And I mean, I hate to use the words, they're like a sellout. But I mean, there's really, I mean, there's no other, other, other way to describe it. They, they go for it, you know. Some people say cash in, sell out, you know, tomato, tomato, whatever. So um, they, they join that other team. And that other team, you know, when you start dealing with large corporations and certain certain individuals of money that are looking to get get into things, they they fight differently, you know. So where we might be used to like throwing hands and you know pulling pulling guns or something like that, they pull contracts, lawyers, they spend mass amounts of money lobbying, buying people, buying uh, influence, if you will um politically um and marketing even on like the most basic level to the end user and get them on board and a lot of that shit goes on behind the scenes and you don't even you know the average person they don't they don't fucking know you know so they're in the dark and then you start seeing these changes happen um uh, so like when I left, like if I were to say, and which I did, you know, I was pretty vocal about it. It's like, yeah, these people are trying to fuck you. Oh no, no, no. You don't understand. I'm like, bro, I literally read this whole thing. Like, you know, like you're talking about, you know, nobody's going to prison over anymore. And it's like, in fact, like med versus like the new law that was, you know, being pushed through is like, you were going to get in more trouble. So, you know, I, you know, there's just a whole lot of, a lot of bullshit going on. So, you know, I'm not I'm not from Cali. I didn't live in Cali. So, you know, you had a lot of people putting putting the word out there and trying to educate people, people that were fighting against it and everything. And then you had people that were indifferent and then you had the opposite, you know. So what ends up going down is um, it goes through. Um, and then 2018. So going back out there now it's all taxation um i have dudes stopping me at the uh at the gate me like hey you can't bring bring any weed in here i was like you're telling me i can't bring weed into the weed show and i'm a vendor i'm not selling the weed but you're telling me i can't have any weed with me and it's legal right okay yeah, that's all fucked up so i'm like looking over at my boy like yeah we gotta we gotta make this happen so I'm like pulling out my knife and being like, well, I guess you got a problem with this big bastard too. And, you know, like halfway making a scene and getting all the guards' attention. And at the same time, he's uh, stealing a golf cart and loading our shit up and running around the back gate and getting our shit in anyway. So I was like, right off the bat, we're starting on a bad note. And then just seeing the uh, the influences that were just, it, it was just a whole different vibe, whole different ball game. After uh, after that, you know, I think I was supposed to be I was supposed to be on a panel with a bunch of people, and I was also supposed to be um, on like an individual interview or whatever. Um, when it was like time, and I guess you know I was pretty pretty vocal about what I what I thought, you know, like, not really vocal, but like you know, you ask me what I think, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. And I thought it was fucked up, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. So <laughs> they uh, they were like, yeah, I guess the one panel was gonna be talking about like the new laws and what do you think. So they're like, yeah, we we don't want this guy. So at the last minute, they pull me off, they replace me with a chat, and then the other interview is like, yeah, you're not doing that either. So we're just gonna fill that spot with somebody else. So right then and there, I'm like, okay, all right, like whatever, like. This is the last time I'm coming anyway. Like I just saw how it was. So it was like my mind's my mind's pretty much made up. So toward the end, um, we we went to this thing like where they were talking. They had the slideshow up, and it was just such fucking bullshit, man. It was like talking to, like the same people that are talking to the same people that were in like you know pushing these laws through and trying to sell it. It's like nobody's ever going to go to prison anymore over it. And uh, this and that. I mean, it was just such bullshit. And I just all out. I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. And I'm, I'm good. I'm done. You know? So that then and there, 2018, I was I was sold on it. I was good. So 19, 20, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it didn't get any better. And then everybody's talking about 
2021, you got these uh, dudes with compliance running around taking people's weed, and, you know, just hassling people and shit. And, you know, on the smaller scales, they're like, yeah, they wiped out the small time people. Um, I mean, it's, that's, it was already seen years ago and now, you know, it's just, it's all coming to fruition. So it, it started and it was such a great thing. And I mean, personally, I mean, this is my opinion. Like it's, it's not anything I, I want to be involved with, you know? So that's just, that's the evolution of recreational and money and, 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 and what, what ends up coming out in the wash. So, if, you know, there was a lot of people very vocal about it, right? But on the same note, we live in this culture where, like, if you speak out on anything, oh, you're hateful, oh, it's harsh vibes or whatever. It's like, no, motherfucker, it's the goddamn truth, right? And if you want to stick your fucking head in the sand and not pay attention to it, year, two, three years down the road, when all your shit's taken from you and, you, and there's nothing left, don't fucking complain. Like, honestly, like, just shut the fuck up, right? And And quit being like that. And when shit happens, like do something about it. Don't, 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 definitely don't tell other people, oh, well, it's not, you know, the way to, no, that is the way to be. Like when you see something fucked up happening, you gotta, you gotta be vocal about it. You gotta speak up. And if it's unpopular, hey, so be it, you know, because at the end of the day, what's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. So where we're at now, I would just say like all these other, states that are coming online like like virginia right just look at what happens in the past and plan accordingly because it, it happens <laughs> literally everywhere so you know like the old saying goes when you when you start forgetting history that's when it repeats itself so learn from the mistakes of what's happened in the past and try to prevent that from happening you know where you live if, if things are you know changing because we we do have a ability you know, so many people used to show up at capitals and protest and fight for med, you know, and then, you know, eventually for rec and everything else. But it's like they give up that that fight. So the fight will always continue because the second you let your guard down, big money, big corporations, private interests, they're going to be in there trying to, you know, undermine every effort that's that's been put into place, you know. So you just got to stay really, really vigilant, you know, if this is what you want to do. And when you find shit coming out, you know, you got to you got to you got to be vocal about it, even if it's unpopular. Yeah, nobody likes to be called a asshole or cocksucker or, or whatever and be trolled online. But, you know, for the few people that are going to be doing that, you know, you're going to have a whole hell of a lot of other people that are really appreciative of, you know, you know, that knowledge and, and, and being able to do it. So I would just say just be vigilant, pay attention to your laws. Pay attention, you know, with the bills that are going through within our community, not industry, but within our community of, of good people. We got multiple guys that are always staying top of like, hey, SB, you know, 444 is, is trying to be pushed through right now. It's a tag along bill with this and that. And hey, they're trying to say no more home grows, no more med or whatever. So just, you know, pay attention to these people. And when it comes time, like ride with these people. Because otherwise they're 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 looking to take it from you, you know. So just stay vigilant and try to keep it from happening happening elsewhere. And um, that way you don't end up with your your good shows and your good times becoming this weird Chad Fest with 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 enforcement coming through stealing stealing your weed and hassling you and threatening to lock you up, you know. Well, I feel like somebody that's uh, well known in the community, Sun Grown Mids. I mean, that's exactly yes. what it seemed like. That's exactly to who I'm weekend. talking about. Yeah. Right. And, and he so, used to be super vigilant. Like, you know, he's always posting like, yeah, they're trying to do this to us. They're trying to do this to us. They're killing the farmer. They're killing this. They're killing that. Like, and, you know, a lot of people would either give him shit or, you know, just not pay mind to it, you know, but he was always like going in front of uh, county, uh, you know, you know, meetings and shit like that, town halls and everything else, and being very vocal, very vigilant about it. So if you have more people like him, you know, that, that kind of puts a puts a stop to to a lot of the shit that they try to pull, you know? Well, I wasn't, I, you know, I don't think either, none of us were there. So it's like pretty hard to, to speak on it. But from the videos and stuff, it seemed like they could have possibly known the stuff that you had just mentioned. It seemed like they might have like 
found a way to target him. Oh, I think we lost him there. But uh, yeah, for yeah. Explain to him what the, what you're talking about, Brian. So folks might not know. Uh, so I I feel kind of uh, kind of silly speaking on something when I wasn't there. But what it what it okay. seemed like is they had some kind of like corporate enforcement agency. Uh, they you know Sun Grown Mids was um, you know it, it's called something. Um, but anyway, they seeked uh, Sun Grown Mids out. It seemed like they were all kind of just sitting around, probably smoking, showing some of the stuff. I saw that. that. He had a clear bag that looked obviously uh, fairly small for the for that kind of individual that's been in the game for that long. You know, personal use to also probably share and give to other individuals. Um, I don't think a lot of people yeah. understand that the Emerald Cup, at least still for some people, is kind of the holy grail of things that it, it, in a way can launch careers. Uh, I feel like for you, Duke, it, it definitely you were, you were kind of the bella of the ball in 2017. A lot of people were talking about you. Uh, with the skunk one and, and some of the, the other genetics that you had. Um, but I wanted to get back to sun, sun grow mids since you just kind of popped back on because uh, yeah. are you more familiar with that agency that was seeking out what, what was going on? And do you think he was targeted because he is kind of more vocal maybe than other others within the community? Um, maybe, uh, you know, he'd be, He'd be a cool person to hit up and have on your show too, you know. That dude's hella smart, like really good dude. You know, I, like I talked to him on IG, but I got to meet him uh, in person, you know, at that that first show and then at, at the next year. Um, I just think that, like, you know, like some of those pictures I saw. There's a lot of lot of those dudes, and uh, they're just walking around looking to hassle with anybody. So I think. It probably happened a lot over the weekend. It's just they chose the wrong group of dudes to roll up on. You know, they were going to, you know, you had Kush family right there with them. You had Masonic with them. You had uh, fucking Bam, you know, Bamboo. Uh, like, they, you had the wrong group of dudes to be fucking with. So they're going to be, you know, in their face, vocal about it, and they're going to be reporting it. So I think a lot of the other instances, people were just like, you know, kind of shook up they're not going to record it or they're just like, Oh, here, just take it. So I think it probably happened a lot more. We just didn't, you know, you're just not hearing about it. So, um, like my buddy, James, you know, James Bean, he, um, he, you know, he gave me kind of a rundown on, on what it was like. Um, and I was like, yes, yeah, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really surprise me, you know, but, you know, when you start getting agencies like that, you know, that's what they're, that's what they're tasked to do, you know, taxpayers money, you know, is, uh, you know, paying for these people to come and bust your balls. And just like with, you know, any other agency, I know you see a lot of cops go out there and do unconstitutional shit, right? And get away with it. And sometimes people call them out on it and shit. Like a lot of cops don't even know the law, you know? They're just doing what they want to do. So, like with these people, I'm sure you know the same thing. Same thing's going to happen with them. They're just going to kind of go through, have some people bust balls, and uh, you know that's just sad state of affairs. You know, this is what it is. I guess at this point. Do you think that the it, the Emerald Cup themselves is kind of pushing that, enforcing that? Did you feel that when you were there, or do you think this is just consequences of us first them and they're allowed to walk around and harass i think that's just the consequence you know i don't think because like you know deep down like you know people with emerald cup you know they're running they're running a, a business you know and their business is good times so they want people to come they want people to have fun they want them to have a good time because naturally you know they're going to want them to come back next year you know they're not going to want a whole bat, bunch of bad shit online but you know, that's a, that's a state agency. Like you can't, you know, you can't really control that. You know, they're going to, they're going to be there. It's a, it's the, one of the biggest shows that, you know, one kid to go to. So naturally, you know, this, this agency is going to be there. So it's not really anything I, I think anybody can control. It's just, you're going to have a show there. They're, they're going to be there. They're going to have plain clothes people there. You know, it's like old Grateful Dead shows, you know, Grateful Dead's not inviting the DEA to show up, but, 
these dudes with crispy tie dyes walking through the crowd asking, you know, do you have any marijuana? Would you like to sell or purchase some with some legal tender? You know what I mean? Like it's it's you know, it's just the, the nature of the beast now. And that's just what what's gonna what's gonna happen. What's that thing? Okay, because I, I felt like y- y'all are y'all we y'all were kind of leaning it towards they were trying to push out the small guy. So that's not the case with the Emerald Cup, or is it? I mean, it feels like that agency is trying to push out. Okay, and this yeah, is kind of guy. floating around. There he is. Yeah, I think it was a yeah. Anyway, that the the bag is on point. The whole thing. So whoever did that is quick. And like this doesn't happen just like over a weekend or one instance, like the big guy trying to push the small guy, you know, that's been going on for a while now, you know, like, like where I was going back and talking about when they're just trying to push the wreck through, you know, even before that is even coming to, to, to be, these guys are going to try to push you, push you out. And that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. I think that's just the nature of business in general. Then have to just be with what we do. You know, it could, it could be worth anything, you know. They're always looking to, you know, take the lion's share, you know, and fuck it all and take it. Um, so mom and pop and all that shit, they, they don't give a fuck. You know, it's just it's a number at the end of the day. They're trying to make the most of it. And it's just what what, it, what business is, you know, whether it's this or shit, any, anything else. You know, it's just like look at Walmart. You know what I mean? So. That's just uh, the nature of the beast, I think. You know, and they've been doing it a long time. And this is just one of the many little things that happens over the years. And it, it'll probably get a whole lot worse before it gets any better. That's for sure. Well, and if he was targeted, I feel like that's, you know, that's kind of, there definitely are kind of where Marco was getting, like going after the small time, maybe home grower, uh, which, which is really sad to see. I mean, isn't that... Yeah. Uh, that's that's the backbone of kind of the, the the part that is allowing us to continue and educate and, and this whole thing become more of a hopefully federally legal uh, aspect. I feel like craft cannabis hopefully will never go away. And if there is enough of a voice and people are continued to be educated on why, if they view cannabis as medicine, then it needs to be craft. It needs to be organic. That's something Duke that, like I was saying, man, when you, when you came back, you were able to speak at Indo Expo, uh, there was a classic, I think it was maybe like an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, man. You're up there with uh, JJ from Top Dog uh, and Adam Dunn, and you guys were chopping it up. And I felt like you were talking to the audience, man, in a way that, I, you know, maybe in a way a little disrespect to this individual. But JJ wasn't coming at it the same way. And, I, and I've personally seen some things with him where I feel like when you meet individuals that others look up to, uh, and then you actually see them in person or something like that. It's hard sometimes to, uh, I don't know, to just kind of see like, okay, well, I guess that individual is, responds to things in this way and this is how they carry themselves. Uh, but when I met you, man, after that, you continue to carry yourself the way that the community talked about you. Uh, and when you were up on that stage, you were really talking about how to craft cannabis, how, uh, you know, a lot of that shit out there, especially at the time, I guess, was cranberry juice and some yucca extract. Uh, and I'd never really heard anybody on a stage talk like that, man. It's always, you know, the PhD type individuals talking about their products or talking over the audience head. It seems like at times on purpose just to make it seem like, you know, you you should use them as a consultant, even though the, especially at that time, most of the, the industry wouldn't have really respected that individual. So it seemed like there was a lot of smoke and mirrors and that kind of stuff. And you were coming through with that. So for the newer viewers, I was hoping that you could talk about trichomes uh, because there's so much information out there, especially when people start to farm that they want to touch their plants constantly. I I know when I was, you know, it's fun to do that kind of stuff, but you were taking it at, you know, as you're growing medicine, you're taking the time to do that. So I kind of wanted to start there. And then Marco, let's really get into the, the growing aspect because I feel like this is obviously everybody's time is valuable, but uh, picking the brain of uh, of Duke Diamond on a on a level for the newer viewers, I feel like is going to be extremely beneficial for people that want to try to start to farm cannabis using a living soil, no till, however you want to call it, uh, system. Because this gentleman is definitely one of the OGs, again, if you will, uh, of just explaining this to the average person so that they could farm cannabis at home uh, with, with with nothing else. Uh, you know, th- he never expected anything to come back. 
yeah, just my thing was like, especially on stages and shit like that, is like, I'm not trying to like sell you anything. It's like, you came up taking your time to, to hear about a topic or hear me talk. Like, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to give you information. I just want to want, want people to be happy, be successful. And, um, you know, I just want people to, you know, grow their own and, you know, help others. And um, that type of knowledge, you know, if it keeps spreading and then they pass it on, you know, makes the makes the world a better place, you know. So um, as far as like, so we're talking about all this, all this glandular heads, uh, trichomes. So let me see here. I can sum it up pretty quick. So that's our end goal, right? So the way <clears throat> my approach is um to to the growing you know blooming is that my end result is that track on that's where that's where the good shit is so my thing is you know we can focus on biomass first right that's that's well and good because the biomass is the landscape that you know these glands are, are going to grow on and then as the time comes then my focus is going to be more into growing growing glands on the biomass that i you know created for that so a lot of my feeding um it, it, it's going to be more more geared that way so I'm, I'm ensuring that i'm getting good good resin production overall but uh, flavonoid production and terpenoid production so smell and flavor um are definitely you know that's 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 kind of like my end game and then harvesting correctly at the proper proper time, you know, and when it's right, ready to go. So pumping that watermelon. Oh, oh, yeah, all right, she's good. Let's pull it. Um, so getting to that proper time, and then after that, you know, that's where most people are like, all right, score, I did it. Um, that's you're you're at the halfway point because now we got the dry, right? And then we're gonna have our trim, right? And then we're going to have our, our the finish of drying is kind of what I call it because it's not I'm not really curing yet I don't consider ourselves still in drying and then uh, moving forward into the cure so a lot of things that you know I always saw that you know people people mess up but hey I mean it's like it's their bud you know you can you can finger bang it all you want <laughs> I can rub all the glands off before it's done but um, that's just not my jam so I'm trying to avoid you know, contact with these. So I'm not, you know, sitting there squeezing everything. And if you got to, man, if you got to get a little smell, go down low, go down low to some water. You know what I mean? Mess, mess with that. Don't, don't mess up high. Um, when we're chopping, um, you know, avoiding that harsh contact. Um, I like to snip off the, uh, the fan leaves, like while it's in the pot, staying it up. I like to leave about one inch of that, that petiole stem. Um, and, and drop the leaf, cut it in sizable, consistent lengths, you know, so I'm getting a more consistent uh, dry. So I, I don't have a three foot long branch with a one foot long branch. I try to keep everything ratio the same way. Um, once we're hanging, I like to have good air circulation, um, run dehumidifier or dehumidifiers. It's a big area. Um, throttling it back and forth because I want good steady production of you know or drying um i don't want it to drop too quick and i don't want it to take forever either but you know i want to i want to take my time there so i'm throttling back the humidity back and forth um and then knowing like hey when is it when is it time to trim so you know it's pretty pretty simple with me i would go up and and average it across these hangers or wherever i'm at and you know your lowest buds are going to be at the the, at the hanger point because you know you're hanging and i'll take my finger and just you know just kind of do one of those dudes on that sugar leaf and if it just breaks right off pops right off i do it there i do it in the middle and then i do it down near the cola you know so if i'm getting them popping off like that um if i'm getting them popping off like that i know that okay now i'm, I'm ready to start my trimming now when i when i first uh went out west you know, they had, you know, legalization going on in Oregon. And uh, I was going over to my buddy pig farmers and they had these people trimming and they were grabbing these, these, these buds just by the hand. And I mean, like, 
squeezing the fuck out. I'm like, yeah, and just just hacking them on the shit. I was like, oh my god. I was like, bro, you see what these assholes are doing doing to your shit? And he was like, oh yeah, it's just how they do. I was like, shit, not my shit. I don't fucking do my shit like that. I slap the fucking taste out their mouth, man. You're fucking ruining all my hard work. So when I trim, I hold the branch you know, or the stem, and I don't touch the button. I just rotate it, you know, just sit there and rotate it around to, you know, to trim, you know, and get it done. After that, I don't let it drop three feet into a pan. I take it out of the pan. I, I flip it off. Um, and I know there's people that do, oh, well, commercially, well, I'm not talking about your commercial production whatever i'm talking about me doing me and people doing for themselves so you know if you want to use your machines or whatever hey you know what i'm saying go do you i'm looking to grow and and have the the best that i can possibly have so if we're talking you know best possible outcome you know treat treat it treat it as such you know so i'll clip it off you know in these pans um i'm gonna let my drawing continue because after i got a you know i don't also don't bury my shit you know and like you know, six inches deep, you know, like two, three inches, you know, it's about as much as I go. And then I'll put them in like something I can seal up, seal it for 24 hours, open it up. And you'll notice everything went back to a little damp because that innermost moisture has started to wick out toward the, toward the drier outside. So you got to continue, you know, doing that to really finish it off. And um, another thing was people found like, all right, cool, we're dry. Let's, you know, jar it up even if they have got to that point um the, the smell so like you might notice like hey man you know i got my shit it stinks <clears throat> it goes away but we're good i'm just gonna put it away so that typically will you know it's gonna screw you in the long run so what i would do is you would open it up the smell hits you in the face and it fades away and people are like oh my god it's gone it's gone let me seal it back up don't do that just leave it open the smell is going to come back. When the smell starts coming back, seal it up. Open it the next day. All right. Smell is going to hit you in the face, right? And then after a little bit, you know, a few minutes, it, it's gone. It fades away. Leave it open. You'll notice the smell will start coming back. It's, you know, it's it's still finishing, you know. So go ahead, seal it up. And you're going to repeat this process at the point where you can open it. The smell hits you in the face, right? And it doesn't fade away. At that point, you should be dealing with one very stinky good shit. And two, the bud should have like a kind of a stale marshmallow consistency, you know, cultivar dependent. Some shit's as hard as a fucking rock, you know, but you should be you should be good to go. You're not overly dry. You're not wet either. You know, you're, you're right. You're right in that sweet spot. It's stinking. The smell's not going away. Now you're ready for the jar. So now you're going to keep it in the jar. Cool place, dark place. UV is going to degrade it. So don't leave it in the sunshine. Just keep it in the cabinet. Treat it like you would like a bottle of wine or something. And then after that, you know, burp it, you know, for a minute, you know, each day. And over time, you know, these these glands, like, they're, they're still doing their thing. So, you know, I wouldn't touch anything, shit, six weeks after the chop would be about the first time I'll start blazing anything. Yeah, there were some guys I knew that would be like, you know, eight weeks, ten weeks before they would touch it. And you'll notice, like, if you take a bud, and you know burn it like right away and then you wait that six weeks and then do it again you know, it's a world of different smell taste everything you know so just remember like the whole time you're growing you're focusing on these on these heads because that's that's our end game especially for the 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 oil you know hash producers um but you know the fight isn't up until until it's done you know so you got to keep it going the whole way and if you're putting a lot of money into the grow, don't start cheaping it out on your on your dry process, you know. So keep 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 up the work through that, and then you end up with a much uh, much better better thing at the at the end of the day. So as is just my two two cents on it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, for for an advanced farmer, that's very basic stuff. But I feel like when you get to an elite level and you actually start to hear a professional talk about their day, the way they break things down, a lot of that stuff is just repetitive, same kind of thing, knowing uh, what to do and what not to do. Uh, there was a uh, meme video I remember that went around maybe a year or two ago. Uh, Marco, I think you might have remembered this one uh, where they were bouncing the all the the plants 
they were basically like the whole line of these people were playing basically like the conga drums uh, with the plants themselves just smashing everything uh so even i feel like at, at especially at the corporate level i don't think that they really value the trichomes the way that the small time individual does and that i feel like is our our secret something that we can hopefully hold on to is that it doesn't seem like they give a shit about so if the industry knows that that's the real secret of things even with fake uh, cannabis uh when they give that to individuals it, from what i understand it doesn't um work the same and then god only knows if you've you know if you were only able to smoke like k2 or something like that that's a i don't even feel like that's saying the word synthetic cannabis i don't even feel like that's justified because there's no way near uh, the same thing with cannabis and K2. So uh, you can't recreate those people... organic compounds. You know what I mean? Like there's, yeah, synthetics aren't going to do that. Synthetics will give you kind of the overall cannabis feel, you know, you'll get that, but you'll never get that full, you know, profile, like a, you know, good grown flower will give you. I know Duke can agree with that one. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've watched his motherfucking smoke days, man. Like, Ain't nothing cannabis about that shit, man. That's close to the goddamn angel dust. Like motherfuckers smoking and bombing fluid and shit. Like, uh, I've seen some shit with that stuff. Like, oh, love boat back in the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It looks like motherfuckers smoking boat all hooking, <laughs> shaking out, screaming and hollering and shit that ain't there. Like, yeah, ain't nothing canna about that. <laughs> All right, Duke. So I would say your style, especially your early when you were vocal with a lot of things is, I guess, the easiest way to describe it was kind of like no till. You know, I don't think you started this before that was even a buzzword. Uh, but I noticed that, you know, your pots were a little bit smaller than what is conventional thinking today. And, and I was hoping that we could kind of go down, you know, why you view things the way that you do. I know that you're big on top dressing. You were one of the first ones that broke down insect frass, where I felt like a uh, Georgia boy could understand why that was extremely important. Because um, when you read it in a book, I mean, it comes across a few things, insect frass, you read that, and maybe you go and Google what that means. Uh, it just doesn't have the same caliber when someone breaks down what that's really doing for the plant. Uh, so I was hoping we could kind of run down that road too, man, because that was something that really stuck out to me uh, when you were talking about that once on a podcast. Hey, Duke, and yeah, talk, um, get into kind of like your progression too of growing, you know, how we all kind of started and, and how, what led you to where you are and that kind of thing too. Bro. All right. Well, I'll start there. So um, let's go, let's start. Let's start with Subcool and Vic High. So, soil growing, I mean, just just on, on a very basic level, it worked. It was good. Um, you're just going off the uh, old-time farm knowledge and just, just farming at the end of the day. Um, internet, horrible, horrible thing, but very cool, too very good tool and it allowed me to to talk to other people right and that's something that i noticed over you know, decades now um and this part's kind of go, gone by the wayside it's like people helping other people and learning from each other's mistakes and our successes and sharing knowledge and just talking and having like a good knowledge exchange and not a lot of people just get crazy in the feelings and butthurt and prideful especially nowadays where we didn't used to be like that and I was just all ears you know like whatever you're doing I want to hear all about it man because whatever successes you're having could definitely impact mine and vice versa you know I might be doing something you might be doing something neither one of us does and we share that with one another and now we both we both came up you know off of that so um so with vic high and subcool as well uh, what they would call you know super soul um putting a lot of amendments in into into a soil pot and just and just growing from there so i was like all right you know these dudes obviously they they're they're very very good and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna try that so i did um i noticed like for me 
um, it was way too hot. Just way, way, way too hot right off the bat. So um, the rest of it I had made up, I kind of I kind of cut it down, you know, you know, watered it down, if you will. And I noticed my plants were a lot happier. Now I can't say like, OK, well, this shit was too hot. It shouldn't be done that way. But for what I was growing at that time, um, it was it was a little bit, a little bit too much. And then just fast forward over the years, tweaking like little things here, little things there, because at the end of the day, like we're all like not perfectionists, but you know, we want to do our, the, the, the best, uh, the best thing that we, that we can do. So it all started with having a question and wanting an answer and then learning the science behind why does this do what it does when it does it. And then that way you can kind of get a control of these things. So the the search for knowledge and it turned into a manic OCD reading everything, um, trying to trying to get a better knowledge of, of what, what we're working with. And then taking that knowledge and saying, okay, well, if this is happening, maybe I should do this, do that. So introducing new things, learning more about micro microbiology and these microbes, um, that helped a lot. Like what are they doing? And furthermore, not only like what exactly are they doing? Like, what does this strain do? What does this strain do? But how do I make these little little critters as happy as possible and the most productive as possible? So, you know, good good knowledge backing, you know, changing little things and only changing one thing at a time. So that way I can like quantify it. So I can't change 10 things. And if something goes wrong, well, you know, I don't, I don't know what it was. So I can ID like, yes, this definitely works. This definitely got better. This definitely didn't work. It got worse. And this is why. And just tweaking little things back and forth, back and forth. And then say, I meet, I meet dudes like y'all and you're like, oh yeah, well, you know, um, I don't know. Um, I think of a good example. Yeah. So you use like earthworm castings. Okay. And you got, you got your, uh, you know, some some cow manure in there for a compost. Cool, you know, be like, yeah, you ever you ever mess with like Alaskan, you know, humic and shit? And you're like, no, oh, what's that? And you get to reading about it, you know, the overall benefits of it. And you're like, okay, that's cool. Let me try it. And then you do it, and you're like, hey, this 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 got better. Um, getting turned on to like mixing a little bit of neem cake. Um, people that use diatomaceous earth, all these like little things, you know, I just kept picking up, try it, it works, it works, cool, not, you know, goes to the wayside. So talking and hanging out with a lot of people from all over the place with varied experiences kind of, kind of, kind of led to what was going on. So, you know, I made mistakes like anybody does and learning from those mistakes and that experience over time just it, it makes you better better and better um and i would say like just being being open and keeping your eyes um keeping your eyes and your ears open talk less listen more um kind of kind of let it to to turn into what it what it turned into and having results that were purposeful they, they weren't happen, happening by accident. It was purposely going through it step by step by step by step and trying to make things as perfect in every step, every step of the way. Um, and then that ends up leading to, like Brian saying, um, soil pot size. Um, I've grown in huge pots. I've grown in little pots. You know, I've tried to grow huge plants in solar cups just just to see, man. Just to see what I could do, how long mm -hmm. I could do. a plant solo cup plant. challenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just seeing right. what they do. Um, I found that I could get better better space management um with those smaller, smaller pots, Brian. And you know, I'm looking at it in a cubic footage kind of way. So I knew that for the height that I really like. Um, and putting in there like you know light penetration that we're getting from the from the lights that we were you know using at the time, I know that optimally 
I'm going to get my best results from something between uh, five and six feet. Based on that that height or whatever, I knew I was good to go with, say, like a 10 to a 15-gallon gallon pot. And some guys are going 50-gallon pots. And um, I just felt I got the overall potential out of my plant better when it was sized, you know, that height, you know, and, and the diameters that, you know, were, were working for me. Um, I could get more productive weight out of out of each you know you know you know meter squared however you want to how you want to measure it um and i could get more quality actual non-larky bud that way you know so it's it was all about the economics of, of the space making the space work for me you know versus trying to make the plant work into the space if that makes sense so i like you know like i said the 10 to the 15 gallons for that size smaller you know I could do a five gallon just depends like the garden and where I'm at and what, what I'm trying to accomplish at the, at the end of that. Um, as far as like the inputs and everything, um, you know, a lot of shit, you know, I would just, I would just make it grocery store items and stuff like that. Um, I mean, we could go, that could be a whole, whole nother episode for you, you know, the whole teaming with grocery stores shit, you know, how to make, you know things that are sold for hundreds of dollars a gallon and make it for like a couple bucks um that's a whole nother whole nother thing but the approach always stayed the same you know make the environment as good as you can um if you got your your regimen dialed down for the soil that you're using with the knowledge that you that you gain in your experiences um you you know you should be having a having a, a, a good run and um just avoiding, especially for the new people, um, less is more. Um, people, when it comes to growing, they never underdo shit. Everybody always over, over does everything to the nine. So, you know, just reel it back, start slow, you know, and then work yourself up a little bit and, you know, versus the, the other way around. Um, and you'll find that you'll have something better to, to show at, at the end of it, you know. Cause like these plants, they're not, they're not strippers, man. Like <laughs> they don't respond to dollar bills being thrown at them. Like, you know, it's just at the end of the day, it's a, you know, it's, it's science, you know? So, um, you know, learn as much as you can about as much as you can when it, when it comes, comes to the task at hand, no matter what it is that you're doing and you'll, you'll always do better. And as far as like, the no-till thing, like people would like when that when that came to be, they're like, Oh yeah, no till, no till. And I was like, Oh yeah, man, I'm I'm not tilling it or throwing it away. Like, but yeah, your cover crop and this and that. I'm like, I don't do it. Oh, that's not no till. That's like, bro, I'm just I'm just doing my thing, man. I'm just I'm just doing my grow. And you know, like I mulch it, like when I strip off my lower thirds, you know, I always take the scissors and I would mulch it up real good throw it on top, throw a little bit of kashi on there. You know, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting a, a little similar, similar job going, but you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to grow beets and weird weeds and shit on my, on my, on my soil. Like that's super cool. Like outside, you know, I've seen people do that in greenhouses and outdoors. It's just, it just wasn't my jam, you know, for, for what I was doing. Like I'm all about it, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, people like to do It's just, it didn't fit well with with what I was doing. So with that being said, like, don't just roll with whatever just for the sake of it. You know, like, you gotta you gotta do what works for you in your environment in your space, right? Because you know, not everybody's space is the same. Not everybody's growing the same thing. You know, you really gotta dial in your space, your plants with you and your regimen. You know what I mean? And just try to, you know accommodate this plant the, the best you can, you know, and you're going to be able to do that with knowledge and education. So, um, you know, read a book. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, just and, and then I kind of wanted to get more into, uh, especially at the, at the basic level, I was hoping that you could kind of explain to a newer person that was wanting to buy genetics, especially during the fall winter months, 
Um, what does it really take to be like a hype breeder? Um, what are they actually doing? Can you kind of break that down from your point of view? Um, and then I'd love for you to talk about, you know, why, why the work is so important to, to put in the work if you're going to sell that to the community. Oh man, you're going to hit on, hit on all the points, aren't you buddy? Um, and like, just to make sure, like, I'm, I'm understanding, like, when you say like a hype breeder, you're talking about somebody taking the whoever that is. Them. Yeah. But how yeah. easy it is to be that I'm not trying to right. call out anything. I'm just saying like right. how easy it could potentially be when someone doesn't put in the work. And then if you still, you know, if you still want to rock those genetics, that's you. I just want people to be informed. Yeah. I think um, another way to say it too, Duke uh, is to, what what do you look for in your breeder? You're a breeder. What's a who's a breeder's breeder? You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you, man. Um, so as far as how simple it would be, um, you could. And I mean, it, it, <laughs> I've observed it being even worse. I was gonna say you could just go out, get the new hype clone. Um, it can be bought somewhere, you know, probably at like a nursery or whatever. But even if it isn't, I've seen people say, "Oh, I got it," and it ain't even it. Just use the name, slap whatever on it. They'll go by seed company, ABC, whatever, find a mail or maybe reverse something, hit it, throw it in some packaging. You know, they don't, they ain't testing or nothing. Slap a, a, a dessert name on it and be like, all right, roll it, you know? And people are like, oh man, you know, I need that, I need that, I need that. Then they get it and they grow it. And, or maybe they don't, maybe the seeds don't even germinate. Um, and it's just not what they want. And then they get burned and, um, you know, they're unhappy. So what I look for, <clears throat> I look for somebody who's, who's well, one, starting it, it's grabbing my interest, you know. They're, they're doing the type of thing, like if you're looking for something to eat, somebody that's like they're they're cooking what you what you want you know? so it's gonna start there so obviously you're looking for something your search has led you to to this person or this company uh from there i'm looking like how much do they actually get into to to doing what they're doing like um is it just a, a thing they're just doing just to do it you know just to have it out there or is this like a project that they want to do for them or you know it's something that they're passionate about so i guess i'm looking for passion you know um that they're they're really doing it for you know a reason other than just chucking some shit together and, and getting paid um i like to see that they're you know that there's a little thought process behind what they're doing and that they do have like an end goal um i like to see them growing it and like uh, actually testing it and having having a thought on, you know, like, you know, this is what's happening here. They turned out good, and you know, the project's done, and here now to now to be authored. Um, I like to see people that offer some some support on their side. Um, it's really a weird thing now because you'll get people that don't even grow certain people shit, and they. Uh, They'll troll them just for the sake of doing it, you know. So, internet trolls, weird people, they've kind of fucked that up a little bit, but you still got a lot of them out there. If you got a problem, they'll walk you through it. Um, they're not greedy with the knowledge. Um, and they'll stand behind their product after after the sale. Um, those, are, those are the primary things that, that I'm looking for, you know. Um, so it's grabbed my interest. They're actually putting in putting in the work, and there was an end goal. And you you actually see them come to that. You know, um, if you're if you're hitting all those notes, like you're you're probably you're you're, you're going to be happy. You know, at the end of the day. And it's like there's a lot of guys out there that don't literally do any of that, and they make money. But I mean, they only they only get away for, with it for so long. You know, you're only gonna you know, get, get one over so many times. So, um, but you'll notice that a lot of these other guys have been around, you know, a hot minute. And there's a reason why they've been around a hot minute. It's because that they're, they're, they're doing good work, you know? So it's like the equivalent of Amazon reviews too. You know, you, you'll hear input from other people. 
and generally if you got a lot of people saying really good things you're you're you know you're probably going to be in good hands you know and we we do have a lot of a lot of people out there that are still still doing good good quality work unfortunately they don't get put in the limelight a whole lot because they, they don't they're not focusing on hype so and a lot of the hype guys are the ones that are going to get your press and you know everybody's going to be talking about it and shit. so it's kind of unfortunate but it's on you like you seek it out like i mean they're, they're there you know like the good shit's there just gotta you know kind of weed through a little bit of the 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 bullshit the shit that's like right in your face you know like walking into a store all these ads and discount shit right in your face right off the bat you know you really got to get into the store before you you know start making your mind up you know so yeah that's i think uh, i kind of attribute it like um you know a horse breed or a dog breeder you know you know i used to breed dogs back in the day and my thing is if you're gonna breed dogs then you should know that that dog can do what it's supposed to do before you breed it I think it's probably mm -hmm. the same way with cannabis. Like so many people, like you said, run it, slap a label on it, put it out there. Like what about the testing part where the consumer right. can feel comfortable that that shit is legit, you know? And I think that's right. valuable. Yeah. And like I come from a world too is like, you know, I'm, if, if I don't want to like put something out there and it'd be all fucked up and wrong, and then before you know it, like you might be at a show or something. Or shit, you might be walking down the street. Somebody run up on you and fucking stab your ass or beat the shit out of you. You know what I mean? Like back in the day, like people's freedom was on the line. So like if you were gonna waste somebody's time like that, man, you might you might expect a an ass whipping at the minimum, you know. So uh, you know, even though like I mean, maybe you know, it still is in certain people's position, but at the end of the day, man. It's somebody's time, man, you know, even if like, you know, there's people that need it for medicine, you know, or it, it just, it doesn't matter. You're dealing with somebody's time and energy. And if you're fucking somebody out of that, like time's priceless, they can't get that back. So you gotta, you gotta do the right thing and make sure that, you know, their time's well spent and they're getting what they want. And at the end of the day that they're, they're happy with that. Um, otherwise, man, I'd, I just wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't sit well with me. I, I just couldn't, you know. Yeah, you, you got to do it for the right reason, man. It's, your heart's yeah. got to be in it. And I think the problem with today's industry is that there's so many consumers that they can fuck off thousands of people getting a pack, a pack. Mm-hmm. Can you hear him, Duke? No, nope. it sounds muted. like, uh, Marco, you're muted or the, the sound went out on you there. Mm -hmm. Try again. Un unmute yourself there. Who's that here? Can you hear us, Marco? All right. Well, while he's fixing that, um, hit it. <laughs> yeah, throw it on the it. ground. Yeah. Let's kind of uh let's talk about some of those genetics that you're known for, you know. That you, like, okay, so a newer a newer farmer is kind of at least has the cautionary tale to say that you need to research your genetics cuz myself included, that was the last thing I thought about. Uh trying to buy all the lights and the tents and the whole thing and then finally to get the it was it was really uh hard to be able to achieve that. Um so I hope that the newer farmers see that we're going more towards, you know, kind of you want to work from the genetics on down. Uh, everything obviously is important. Your environment is extremely important. But I just wanted to put that footnote that genetics need to be more important uh, than you probably assume. And, and it's yeah. multiplied, I feel like, Duke, uh, w when you're fortunate enough to be in kind of like a commercial setting. Uh, when you're able to grow thousands of plants, uh, those little tiny mistakes or shortcuts that some of the somewhat famous and famous breeders out there, uh, when that's magnified, it is disheartening because people look at you like, you know, you don't have your shit together. Uh, when a lot of that time it's, it's just falling for things that you probably shouldn't have fallen for, you know, I, uh, when I enjoyed playing poker uh, shortly for, for profit, uh, I felt like that was one of those things is like when you'd call somebody's and, and they weren't bluffing, you thought they were bluffing. Uh, you just felt that kick in the, in the gut and it, it felt brutal because it was, 
it was for a decent amount of money, you know, and and on the commercial level, I feel like it's you get that same kind of feeling and kick in the gut kick in, when when it's worth that, especially when it's not yours and you're trying to represent and continue to build things. And a lot of that comes back on to genetics. Uh, so I wanted to kind of then go down the road with you on how you're doing the work, putting in the work so that people can realize from from, again, a breeder's breeder. This is somebody that a, a lot of the people that. Uh, you're probably currently growing look up to and i, I want to put that caveat on there because uh we're lucky enough to have you on the show man and i feel like you know you're you kind of let the social media shit on fire uh since you've been out so uh just something that I feel like, uh you're, you're good at man so let, let's kind of talk deeper into the the breeding of the, of the genetics and um marco if you're back uh if you wanted to add anything I don't know if he can hear me. So let's let's He's run still through. working it out. Yep, we're still working that yeah. out. Oh, you're cool, man. What up, fam? Um, yeah, there you <laughs> can go. Can y'all hear me now, man? Oh yeah, in there like somewhere. All right, Marco. So I was gonna let him kind of run into why he's known as like a breeder's breeder, somebody that. Hello? Man, always a uh, technical issues. So let's let Duke kind of run into that, and then hopefully uh, Marco, we can figure that out. Right on. Um, so, like, where everything starts for me is like there, there's a there's an end goal in mind. So this goes for like. Um, Sounds like they're working. That's not me. Have a great show. <laughs> um, so everything would would start for me with an end goal in mind, right? And <clears throat> this goes for like you know me like. Anybody that's watching, it's like, hey, I might, I might be looking into doing my own breeding. And just because you're looking at doing your own breeding, I mean, it doesn't mean you're trying to, you know, be like, you know, slinging seeds or, you know, doing it for a living. There's nothing wrong with making your own things, you know, um, for your own liking because, you know, you might be different. Or is there something out there that you haven't seen done that that you, you want done? I mean, like you should be, you know, do that. So. So keep this in mind, like while I'm talking about, you know, like, you know, the way I'm working through this is start with an end goal. Um, the end goal could be um, something um, medicinally, right? Um, something I might treat, treat myself with um, anxiety, you know, pain, um, not being able to sleep, insomnia, um, maybe something to you know, be like high octane during the day to work on. Um, you know, uh, I used to deal a lot with like sick kids and autistic kids and everything. So I made some things, you know, that kind of lean more their way. Um, or maybe it's preservation, right? Maybe something's not around anymore. You got the last, you know, dinosaur egg on earth. You know, you're trying to preserve that. Um, or you know maybe it's a, a a smell taste that you're that you're looking for, um, whatever that goal is, you know start start there with the concept and the goal. Um, as you're going along, you know you're going to have a lot of different um, tools in your toolbox to to get to the uh, get to the end of the goal. Um, as far as your toolbox, it's you know it's up here. Um, so knowing uh knowing uh what to do and everything um and you know you can you can read you know on it um talk to others about it um filial breeding uh back crossing um and crossing everything else um you can you can you can and you can do it and you can see the result and it might work in one thing it might not the other that's that's the, that's the whole part about this it's like we're growing out things. We're making selections based on our, our senses, you know, eyes, taste, smell, you know, um, and, and what's desirable to us, right? So as we're going along this 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 process and making our selections, um, our selections are also got to be based on, you know, once again going back to our toolbox and our knowledge of like how these how these things work, making selections in males and not just in the females and knowing what we're looking for in, 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 in the male genetic to, to pass along. So um, a lot of that's going to come with experience, trial and error. 
Um, and, you know, doing each step the best way you can and not accepting mediocrity because mediocre shit is going to give you a mediocre result. So take the time, you know, do the numbers um, and, and find that. And if it's not what you think it is, don't be afraid to just shit can it and, and move along, move along for the next thing. Um, so as you're, as you're um, moving forward, I mean, hey, maybe what you're wanting to do is going to end at an F1 hybrid. You're going to grow out a bunch. You're going to find it. You got your clone, boom, you're done. Um, with someone who is going to sell them, um, you know, maybe maybe that's going to work as an F1. Or maybe, you you know, you plan to uh, really stabilize a certain phenotype that you got. And, you know, maybe you're going to you know try to cube it or maybe you're going to cube two separate lines, with two separate males and then, you know, um, combine those at the end. You know, this might be a hell of a long project. You might take the F6, you know, whatever, but just, you know, meet or exceed your goal and um, do it right. And if you're happy with it, you know, that's that's number one, right? If you're doing it for you. And, and, and furthermore, if you have high taste, right, and you're happy with it, more than likely, you know, a lot of other people are going to be really happy with it as well. Now... Um, as far as that goes, it's kind of like cooks. Um, you know, your best steak is only as good as the best steak you've ever had. You know, so if you've been eating at TNA truck stops, you know, four ninety nine dollars T-Bones forever, and you never had Ruth Chris or <laughs> had anybody really on the grill, um, that's the extent of your knowledge of good and quality. So, you know, get out there, you know, and, and know, I guess, know where you're at. So the more diverse your palate is, for, for things, you know, it, it's going to help you in your long term, help you in your long term goals as well. So, um, just start with the goal. You know, learn learn the the fine aspects of it, and take your time with each step. Do it right, and don't don't shortcut shit. And you're you're gonna you're gonna have success again. And that's 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 basically how how I how I go about it in a um in a short, short, short way of putting it, you know, um, I go through a lot more, a lot more steps because mine was, you know, was, you know, available to, to all. So, you know, there was a lot of things I was like trying to keep in mind, um, with, with the, with the end, end user in mind, because it, it might be some guy's been run forever. That's just like, you're so on point, you know, and he rocks out or it could be a first time grower that has the worst environment in the world. Um, so, um, or they, they just might, you know, like I said, overdo everything. So I was looking to make that experience better on the end user. Um, I make selections through some stress testing and shit because I might have three winners and they're all about the same, but one seems like, you know, a little more, a little more heat resistant or, or whatnot. So, you know, if, when it comes down to picking all three, like they all hit the marks on everything, one's a little more heat resistant. I'm going to go with that one. And hopefully, you know, with each step that I'm looking for the, the main the main things, my potency, smell, flavor, um, structure, and all, I'm trying to improve every little thing I can with each step while I'm there. And by the time you're at the end of it, you're doing good. And also in the in the testing phase too, I'm looking for any little kinks, man. If these things are just calcium monsters and they just, you can't give them enough. That's something I need to know. And that's something that I need to know and make sure the end user knows because I don't want them growing and having a bad, bad result. And when I could have just easily said on the back of the pack, Hey, you know, weeks, you know, one through three, um, with these bad, bad girls, you're, you're going to want to supplement you know, a lot more calcium than you normally would. So, you know, look out for that. Um, if a plant was a little bit light sensitive, you know, I, I'd want to put that there. So you're not automatically blasting these things on, you know, super high output on the lights and then wondering like, huh, I wonder if I'm overwatering or if it's something like that, you know, so passing that, that knowledge on to the next person. So they're not having to figure it out for themselves, you know? So, um, and then let them know at the end, you know, it's like, well, you know, out of these, you know, you know, three phenos that, that you see commonly, this one's growing like this, this one like this, this one like this. Smells are typically this on this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. 
and uh, you know, kind of give them an idea of the results. That way, when they are shopping around and looking for what they want, they can read that and say, hey, that sounds like my thing. Or like, you know, the smell of garlic and rubber just does not sound like what I want at all, you know? So they can make an educated decision on what they're going to get beforehand. And then if they do go through with that, they, they have, they have the, the, the knowledge on, on the back of it to say, okay, you can avoid these things to grow at the best that you can, whether it's the guy that's been growing forever or the new grower, it's good shit to know. And, you know, I can know that it's been grown and it's going to, it's going to perform for both of those and anybody in between. So that's where I was looking to be more as like a person that puts things out there for, for everybody, because I don't, I don't know whose hands it, it's going to be in, you know, but at the end of it, you know, no matter who it is, I want to be happy and I want to be, you know, successful because you just, like I said, at the end of it, you're dealing with people's time, whether it's for money or medicine or just, you know, getting tore down, like, you know, I, I want to be happy and their time should be well spent, you know? One thing I like, Duke, is, um, and, I'm, and I missed a lot of that, guys. I had a little technical difficulty, but one thing I like, man, can y'all hear me okay? Oh, um, yeah. yeah, so um, one thing I like, man, is when a breeder, like I asked a guy, I said, hey, man, which phenos should I look for? You know, and he hit, when his answer back told me that he wasn't ready because what he answered Ooh. back, he just sent me a picture and said this one, you know. So I like I like when a breeder says, well, look for, you know, if, if you see a purple one or a silver or, you know, certain things like that. Give me a little bit more to go with. I, I like that yeah. kind of experience. That means you put your time into it and you know that there's a few different phenos and one's mm -hmm. better and one's maybe not preferred and that kind of stuff. So much respect. Exactly. For that. Yeah, man, because my thing, like I, I used to get that question a lot, too. And um, my quick answer was always like, well, I mean, whatever, whatever one you like the best, <laughs> but I, um, but like, you know, I tell them like me personally, out of like these three most common ones, I like the one that was a little more tall, tall and a little bit lankier, it definitely had the terpene profile that I was like really, really shooting for, but the shorter ones are like, they're super awesome and potent. It's just, eh, the smell of it, not exactly what I was going for. It's, it's unique all on its own. That's the things like you might be all about that, you know, where I was, you know, all about the other one, but I can at least tell them like, this is what you, what you got. This is what you're going to get. And, um, you know, these are, you know, this is my personal, you know, what I like the best, but you know, everybody's different, you know, like the dude said on Chappelle, some people like their pickles or cucumbers pickled. Uh huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> So uh, being uh, more on the East Coast, you know, you're known for your genetics, Duke. You're, you're really known for kind of like classic genetics, like Afghani genetics, skunk genetics. Uh, were you kind of making chess moves strategically, consciously when you were going out collecting that kind of stuff? Because it seems like you were able to collect stuff that even other breeders have kind of given you a tip of the hat. Like, damn, dude, you got the real shit over there. Um, no, not really. It was just like, that's what I liked, you know, so it, you know, it kind of, kind of worked out that way. It's like, that's what I, I really liked is, you know, me personally. And like I was saying before, it's like, if you, if you like something, there's a pretty good chance a lot of other people liked it too. Um, so yeah, it was just more of my, just like kind of my, my personal, personal liking of, of what I, what I like. And you know, it just so happens a lot of other people, you know, they're, they're really into the same, same type of things. Um, I guess where, where it's fortunate, um, you know, I liked, you know, good, good Kim genetics and, you know, I was fortunate enough to meet, meet Greg, you know, way back in the day before he blew up like crazy and he was nice enough to, you know, hook bro up and uh, trust me with some stuff. And that was super cool. Um, family that, that grew, and had had good things and um along the way having you know having met some really really good good people in this world that also had similar interests and similar things that would share things you know we'd share things back and forth so it just kind of just kind of worked out that way and when i was doing doing my thing it's like my overall goal um it wasn't to appease you know, everybody else, 
it was I was trying to appease me. I was trying to make things that I really liked or I was going after a medical need of somebody else that I knew. And um, through that, you know, you, you get to passing some of it around and people are flipping out over it. Like I said, if you if you like something, you do a good job on it. More than likely, a lot of other people will too. So it just all started, like I said, with a goal during the breeding of what I had, doing the best I could at it and um, doing it for me or like I said, out of a medical need for me or somebody I knew. And then, you know, helping, helping others out, you know, to, to get that, you know, because like, certain things, you know, they get lost over time. Uh, if they're not preserved or, um, you know, the work isn't further and everybody gets caught up on, you know, the, the latest hype thing or whatever, we don't, we don't move forward. You know, we kind of get stagnant and it's happened in the past and things start getting, getting lost, you know, the whole, I mean, since I've kept up with it from, pretty heavily from say like 98 and on um you just see like trends right so like you had the blueberry thing for the longest time and then uh you know that led into um oranges which led into the to sours which led to kims and ogs and then back to back to orange and then lemons and you know you hit these waves where it's just overwhelming all one thing and during these times people focus like they're chasing the dollar or whatever they you know, you start losing things. And then by the time that waves over, people go back, hey man, you got such and such or whatever. Like, oh man, I had my room full of whatever. I was hoping you still had it on. And I was doing the same thing. So things start getting lost, you know? So um, you got a lot of good dudes out there that are like very good on the preservation. Um, they're preserving things in the pure. You also got people taking old stuff and, and and making new stuff with it, which is super cool. Um, my buddy Bob Hemphill, uh, his his company was Crickets and Cicadas. You know, you can check him out. Um, he, he does really great work. Um, AK Bean Brains, if you ever mess around with him, uh, he's on Instagram. He does great preservation work, him and his, all his boys. Um, and, like, I mean, there's a lot of other people that that's just their jam is just preservation preservation even whether or not they're selling it or not you know they're still making sure that things are preserved before they get uh extinct if you will or, or watered out you know so that's a another big thing but once again it goes back to passion and what they're wanting to do and you know what people do thank god there's there's people out there like them doing that type of work because it's tedious hey duke is there anybody right now that um and I know hopefully your stuff was preserved when you went away. Is anybody oh, yeah. who would you recommend has the closest um, stuff of yours right now that, that people can get, or is anything even available right now? Ooh, um, there might be some stuff left uh, at seats here now of mine. Um, the vault. I would, I would, yeah, yeah. I would say if you're talking like people with the same style you know that that they kind of do that old school type funk and everything um hit up Gammon? uh hold on yes Can I do some with you, all right guys uh, Take care, business. yeah yeah i gotta go do that but uh ak ak bean brains and uh crickets and cicadas uh hit right. them up i'm sorry fellas i gotta Got to cut this short and right, gotta handle this real quick. Yeah, um, no problem, brother. How much longer are y'all gonna be on? Uh, we, we can wait for you and chop it up if it's. it's I don't it's know weird. how long it's gonna take. I'll tell you what. I'll shoot you a text and see if you're still on. All right. Sounds good. good all right, deal. brother. Peace see y'all in a bit. Later. Of course, I'm on mute and now I'm big. Technical challenges. You are big, Chad. <laughs> yeah, for those that don't know, I mean, Duke Duke just got out. So what is he doing with his time? I mean, can you imagine? I, I tried to convey this. I don't know if I did before, but, you know, before COVID happened, imagine all the shit that's happening in the world and life and all that kind of stuff. That whole time, Duke is behind bars, the whole thing. He gets out after all of that. And from a variety of different podcasts, the way he's reaching out, what does he do with his time? He's back at educating. Um, and, and unfortunately, he doesn't really have a lot of his work to be able to start to profit off of things. Um, he's just a gentleman that always gives his time. And that's why I'm 
one of the biggest uh, proponents, hopefully, like, you know, individuals start to see that we have to kind of almost in a way, almost vote for our politicians in this industry. We uh, not everybody has a voice, so we need to have some people out there that just continue to speak the truth, whether that offends some individuals or not. I still feel like you need those type of people that are going to step up, be leaders, talk about when things are fucked up, talk about when things are great. And I feel like Duke is a, is a gentleman that's definitely worthy of carrying that flag among a, a, other individuals in the industry. Uh, I just for, for a lot of uh, newer farmers, they might not know that, you know, that he was around because unfortunately, you know, he was he was locked up for uh, basically two years. Uh, so I just wanted to add that little caveat that, you know, can you imagine all the things you would want to do? Uh, he's obviously at a halfway house right now. Um, and, and then things will obviously improve and he'll be able to get back to what he's trying to do. But uh, the fact that he's just continuing to, to tell stories, give out information and, and give his time to the community is exactly why so many people rock with him. I mean, it's just yeah, I rock there's with your him, proof though. right there. Definitely. Like this is my first time meeting him and I definitely rock with him. Um, first of all, he knows his shit. I can see that right away from talking to him. And just the overall love, man, from the community. You know somebody with that much love, uh, just fresh out, you know that was a good person. So uh, definitely glad to see this man out. Looking forward to being able to talk to him some more um, on his breeding. It's so crazy for me, man, being in Virginia. And he's throwing out years, like 98. You know what I mean? Like that's when I was pretty much young buck, just starting my thing out um, on my own in my own little world man and he was right there 20 miles away right you know right down the road so it's so crazy how apparent and you know you're going through life man how you can be so close to being with somebody and then you never really touch them until it, if the time is right so I'm, I'm glad that uh glad that brother is here man i'm glad i'm getting to know him it's awesome I was really stoked that you asked on Brian about the trichomes and to kind of break things down on a basic level. It's amazing when you find a person of his caliber that is able to relate that so easily and understandable to somebody who's never touched the plant. Because again, exactly his point, don't touch the plant. But that's your initial reaction for any home grower, you know, anybody trying to get started. That's what you want to do. You want to smell it. So he expanded on a lot of awesome things there that you asked, but it was completely approachable and understandable. So that's very refreshing. Yeah, and unfortunately, the the gentleman that used to run the Indo Expo, uh, he was really big on the educational side of things. Uh, and that's what another place where I felt like Duke and, and a few other breeders out there really started to shine within the community uh, because they had a small platform where there was an hour or two um, and then it seemed like every year, you know, Indo Expo was kind of like this annual thing. Uh, and it was starting to kind of be like the best of the best breeders would go up there uh, or the hottest breeder maybe of that year would go up there uh, with with panels and you would get to kind of pick their brains and stuff like that. And time after time after time, uh, the number one requested person was Duke. And I feel like it shows because he he is uh, maybe more of a, a southerner, you know, that he's not. He's not trying to to impress anybody with, uh, with with his big words, but at the same time, if you really listen to him speak, there's extreme wisdom in a variety of things that he talks about. Uh, if he comes back on, I was actually hoping that he could talk about a few things that he shared on the Adam Dunn show uh, so that p people that do kind of gamble with their life, play with things in ways. Uh, Marco, you and I kind of talked about that uh, on a different show and was hopefully gave some guidance if people want to do that. Uh, but the real things that happen and that go on in prison uh, are extremely scary to someone that's never experienced that or to actually see real violence is ex uh, extremely isn't the right ver you know verbiage for that. It's it's eye opening on a whole nother level if you've never grown up with stuff like that um, and, and to experience that and to minimize those things. So uh, if it, hopefully it comes back on. But if not, I, I do want to give a tip of the hat to Adam Dunshow. He was interviewing uh, Duke last week. Uh, and he was talking about some goofy things like chicken beer uh, and secondhand sandwiches. I'm going to let you guys go and research that stuff if you want. Um, and maybe <laughs> do, prison do. don't don't ever take a secondhand sandwich in prison. I don't know, care how cheap it know is. Know where things come from. No, especially, you know, how we always talk about farm to table. Uh, <laughs> know where farm to table is within that system. Otherwise, uh, you are going to get uh, hit in the face with some uh 
eye-opening information on what people do to to survive in there uh, and ways to uh, create capitalism oh yeah i've heard all the stories I, a lot of the guys i grew up with have been locked up man thankfully for me i was never one of them i was always fortunate and uh but yeah i heard the stories man and it's, it's not it's not a game in there for sure rule number one Ch you said it chad but don't accept shit. <laughs> no thank you i'm good once you start accepting things and you oh start owing people things and um I just like the way that man lives his life. He's always giving. When you're always giving, man, you don't owe nobody shit. You know, I pay my dues. I'm giving. I'm giving. I'm giving. So, you know what I mean? And I and I and I that's one thing I respect about him. That's pretty dope. Um we got I mean, a lot of things he was saying, man, is very similar kind of coming through the subsoil, the, the super soils, you know, and all that stuff, man. That's kind of I think that's a lot of folks' progressions, you know what I mean? Coming coming through the game. And the ultimate goal being, I want this, I'm going to ultimately be as clean as I can, you know, no chemicals. And, and and I think that's that's key, man. Don't be stagnant. Like he said, what if he had stopped when he was, you know, 10 years ago when he was using other methods? You know, you got to keep growing. You got to keep trying new things. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess Brian fell off on this a little bit. Yeah, he's he's probably resetting his, his microphone or the headset again. Um, right. But you're absolutely right. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, if it's broken, why fix it? Um, but you can always be kind of pushing the limits a little bit more as well. You know, that's that's one thing I tend to think about. Uh, you know, sometimes the people with, you know, just experience, may get a little comfortable or complacent whereas the person with just the knowledge doesn't really have the understanding but when you kind of merge the two um you're, you're able to see new things but apply that old experience and that is just it's yeah, hard to be in my opinion yeah you can't beat that knowledge plus wisdom is understanding like those three things they all are go hand in hand you can't have one without the other really yeah um, and, he said another thing real big he said with it out there for folks he, he makes a change. You make one change at a time. If you're having an yes. issue, you don't make 10 changes because you don't know what the F just worked or didn't work. You know, that was huge right there. Little things like that are just gold nuggets. Yeah, I feel like hopefully today, if he comes back on, it'd be even, even better for us. But it's kind of like a behind the scenes of like what it takes to, to be a, an elite farmer. And then when you actually hear what they say they're doing, just sound principles you know i mean it's kind of it's it's kind of silly i feel like because yes of course how do you how do you get successful in things through experience repetition the, the whole ten thousand hours mantra and i feel like if you don't uh, abide to that philosophy you're never going to get uh, and achieve the goals that you're after because it does take a a while to do these kind of things i feel like a lot of us have always said this is kind of a four-year degree if you're on this on your own then you need to look at this as like all right i'm going to take four years to really understand this and then at that level i should be able to really grow medicine for myself uh minimize a lot of mistakes uh but you know from the first year or two i feel like there's so many mistakes that you don't even know you're making uh, unless you're being proactive watching shows like this uh, listening to other podcasts and that kind of thing the mistakes are going to be made no matter what um, and that's why real talent and artwork uh, comes from the trichomes. And that's why I wanted to start that show off. And so that you guys can hear from uh, one of the best to do it, what it takes uh, to achieve that. And again, it's all coming down to trichomes. And since our, our most of our industry seems to be moving towards concentrates, uh, then obviously that is the end goal and the skill set uh, that a lot of you newer farmers or wannabe farmers that are moving into living soil want to move into to taking it. In, I guess, in my opinion, to the next level by farming with microbes. Uh, and that really is the difference is you're using Mother Nature instead of uh, yourself, basically, as the farmer. So the plant is consistently relying on you, uh, whereas with uh, more of the, co the conventional living soil style methods, uh, the goal is that the, the plant and the system is taking care of itself. There's a mantra. Um, oh, no, I just forgot. Feed the soil, not the plant. Uh, that was uh, like one of the main mantras, especially to kind of kick these things off. Uh, so, Mark, I kind of wanted you to to talk about some, some farming things uh, because yeah. I feel like, you know, you're, you're so good at, man, at pumping out information. Um, and so we're 
you know, we're live yeah. TV basically. So it fill, exactly. filling in some time, hopefully if he comes back, I love what you've been doing, man. I love how you're explaining certain things, breaking down uh, just even with the rooting gel, uh, cloning gels and that kind of stuff that, that goes a long way. There were even some uh, organic farmers here that were using uh, commercial organic farmers here that were well-respected that were still having to use crutches like uh hormones and that kind of thing to be able to clone at the commercial level uh so behind the curtain i still feel like a lot of things go on even though uh yeah, everyone claims to be certain things yeah man i, I and i and that's all part of seeking um you know more knowledge like um i posted today what brian's talking about on my instagram uh three tablespoons of fresh aloe vera fillets three tablespoons two tablespoons of honey and then a teaspoon of cinnamon um, I put it in a mortar and pestle, ground it up. And where I got this from, um, just like you said, man, like I work, I did some commercial work in the past and we can get into that another time. But one thing I discovered in doing that and researching the products, which a lot of times if you're working commercial and I heard, um, heard Joe's guest on Thursday show, young man y'all had, um, in the facility out there, I forget his name, uh, last week stony jacks 420 that's right, right. Stony Jack. Jack. duran yeah exactly and the young man said some valid things he said you know a lot of times when you're working in a commercial facility it's not yours you have to work within their rules um so when i was doing that and um so i said okay that's their rules and i'm gonna work within it but now you're calling yourself organic so now i'm researching the, chem the products you're using and, and one of the um ingredients in clonex and the dye of clonex is a poison um, so that's that's one way you kind of have to go into, you know, certain situations. Like he said, even you have to show them showing his talent. So anyway, um, it, you know, kind of. So that was the rooting gel. And back to Brian's point and what we're talking about with Duke is growing. Like a, a lot of people message me back. They say, well, I use aloe and that works great. So what's why do I need the honey and the cinnamon? Well, you don't. For my first response is if you got something rocking for you, keep it going. I also use aloe, but I also wanted to step up and try this because I learned it from a friend who's from India. And um, it's a practice that they use when they're you when they're uh, grafting trees, when they're propagating and those kind of things. Um, the aloe has like the enzymes and the growth hormones. The honey is an antiseptic and it has some um, anti uh, bacterial properties. Um, two reasons why you can cut your hand and you can put honey on it. Uh, honey doesn't expire. We talked about that on the show a few weeks ago. I believe it was with um, Think Like Nature. Um, so that's the reason for the honey. And when you have when you have a cutting, one of your main things is, yes, I love my fungi. I love my bacteria. I love all that. I'm living soil. But when I have a cutting, my first goal is to get that cutting to root. And that cutting may not want all that microbiology on. Right. So then now when you add this aloe, which is going to give it growth hormone, you add this honey, which is going to help heal the, the cut you put and give it that um, those properties. And then the cinnamon is a um, antifungal. Um, so um, this rooting gel is I think it's going to be a great um, way to just get another step away from chemicals. If aloe works great. Then um, keep rocking with it. But if you want to try something new and step your game up, try this. You know, it makes sense to me that the science and the, and the methodology makes sense. So, you know, I've been trying and it seems like it works pretty well. And on a deeper level, what's going on with adding the cinnamon? Um, so the cinnamon is the, the main point of the cinnamon is the um, antifungal properties. And so what that's doing is it's just um, sometimes you get a um, cutting and it may dampen off. But what will happen is you take a clone and very healthy, looks good. Um, depending on how you clone, some people do um, aeroponic. Um, I'm not going to mention brand names, but spray, aeroponic sprayer type. Or you can just dip it in um, this honey mix I just mentioned in a, in a, in a uh, um, rooting cube. Um, but what happens is sometimes that clone will dampen off, and that, and a lot of times that's from a fungi that's in your it, that's it, that just gets into it, and it and it just gets in there, and it um and it, and it'll make this the bottom of the stem soft and brown, and it won't be able to uptake nutrients. So the cinnamon is, is supposed to help uh, protect that wound, that open wound from any um, fungi that might get in there. Just keep the just basically keep a nice clean um, environment for roots to to be able to uh, propagate. Now, I'd imagine the quality of the honey matters because 
from what I understand when I read the back of labels and stuff, uh, basic honey is not even honey anymore. It's just high fructose corn syrup in a bear bottle. Yeah, you guys got to watch your honey. Some honey. Read the ingredients. Start. You got to read the ingredients on everything, guys. Like, I mean, this sounds stupid, but there was a point. It was a few years ago. And I don't know if it's still the case, but Briar's ice cream changed their name to Briar's like frozen dessert. You know what I mean? So in life, all these companies, we were talking about it before, capitalism, you know, they don't give a fuck about us. If they replace ice cream with a frozen ice dessert and the people still buy it, they don't care. If the people buy it and it's not as good for your body, they don't care. They, they care about the bottom line. So read your ingredients. Like Brian said, there's honey. It's like you know, the ingredients will be like corn syrup in it. You know, even like at a restaurant, the packs, I would think it was maybe Popeye's used to be real honey. And some of them are gone to now like fake honey in the packs, you know. So, yeah, get get quality ingredients. Um, I feel like if you're going to, you know, buy these things, buy what's what's, what's suitable for you to eat. Like if I'm going to buy honey and I'm going to use it to clone, I'm going to buy quality honey that I want to want to eat myself. You know, it just for the price of it, I think you it's wor well worth it to not cut corn. So and just some, just going on down like some of the stuff Duke was talking about, like I wrote down his one through six, you know, what I mean, At number one, he said building biomass. Huge. Like <laughs> this is if y'all don't get this, this is, some, this is giving me chills because we're growing trichomes. And the only way you're going to get a lot of trichomes is by having a lot of biomass. So his step one, focusing on getting that plant really big and healthy then going into flower now you gotta now you got a substrate for all these trikes to grow on um and it's just going to increase your overall final product you know what i mean number three you know letting the plant grow to its potential you know that's that's that means so much to me i'm a huge proponent i'm always i'm gonna always go a little longer than a little short that's just me i'm always just gonna err on the side of letting my plants go just a little longer just four days more you know, whatever it may be, because I want I really want to let those trichomes tell me when that plant is ready. You know what I mean? I want to use those as an indicator. And I know all of you guys know that you take a loop, a magnification um, tool, and you look at those individual heads on the trichomes. And, you know, you want a majority of them to be cloudy. You know, you don't want a majority of them to be clear. They start out clear. And as the plant um, ages and matures, they turn to cloudy. And then from cloudy to amber, um, along the way, your your the the your your high is affected as well. You know, early harvest. You know, they they say it's more. You know, you get a heady. You know, you you don't get all that full high. You know, um, nice and cloudy with a little bit of amber, you get that full body. And if you just let it go all amber, they say it's a late night, just puts you on your ass. You know, because there's a there's a window. It's gonna degrade after a while. Um, so growing a plant to its potential is huge. And then I tagged on to that. The little tip about popping the little nugs off the stem. I do that. Like I, that's one of my little things. And that hit home, you know, those are, but see what, what's so brilliant about him is I have all these little things I do, but I don't think that to that, you know, cause it's second nature to me. He has the know-how and the knowledge to say, well, hold on, the, the new guy needs to know this. Or a lot of times I'll kind of pass over that. So that's huge um, for getting a proper dry. Um, like he said, man, you want to slow dry. Don't be in a rush to put your stuff in a jar, you know. Use a, you know, I'm, and I don't mean in a jar, I mean for long term. Like, you know, like he said, when it feels crispy to the to the touch, or, you know, it's crispy, put it in a jar, close it for 24. When you open it the next day, it's going to be wetter. That's a process. That's a slow dry. You want a slow dry. If I was to take cannabis and dry it all in one day in a dehydrator, if that was the best way, that's what we would all be doing. Um, but the slow dry is key. Um, one thing I do in that slow dry process, I leave some of the a um, little bit more of the sugar leaves on my stuff, just as kind of like a little uh, bumper kind of a protector as a kind of a crown around all the trichomes. Um, I kind of wait to the very end right before I'm, you know, going to be using my meds before I take those off. Um, then the trim, like you, like Duke was saying, man, be gentle with your trim, take your time. Don't be rough. You know what I mean? 
Um, you're dealing with, you took all that time to grow this stuff and now you want to be rough. You know, if you're going to be rough, be rough and veg. That's when the plants need to be roughed up, you know, to get them tough, get their stems rough, you know, move them around, but, you know, but once they start flowering, man, they're babies. Then they're back to babies. You just let those babies, uh, do their thing. And then the cure, you know, that's all part of drying, you know, take your time. He is very valid when he says, you know, everyone says, well, if it's a dark ash, it's, you know, it was grown with chemicals. It was white ash. It was you know, all good. Well, you can have fresh, all natural farming, zero chemicals. But if you, if you smoke that too soon after drying it, you, you'll get a terrible burn. You know what I mean? So there is value in that slow dry, just taking your time. And he mentioned even, you know, a fine wine. You know what I mean? These are all things that you young guys and, and anyone, myself, old guys, like, I, you know, I, I always t care for my trichomes and I tend to them. Um, but when you hear guys like B Leaf came on and was saying the same thing, then you got Duke saying the same thing. And, you know, I say it and everyone says the value of what you're growing is trichomes. Um, got to be gentle, man. Don't squeeze shit. Don't come in my grow. Don't touch shit. Don't squeeze nothing. If you want to, we can grab you one from down low, like Duke said. Um, but yeah, just in general, guys, you know, the, the, those are kind of what I took from what Duke says so far, man. And um, and I think that uh, it, it's valid stuff, a hundred percent. Well, and again, what what does the the end product look like? The artwork, you know, you mentioned Bee Leaf. That guy's on a whole nother level, and I feel like he's just coming out with hit after hit, you know. Uh, and Duke's the same way. There's there's just so many people out there that do put in the work and then because maybe they don't give a fuck about Instagram. And that's unfortunately basically where everybody is at this point. There's been other apps that even tried to uh, have a community one here in Denver known as Mass Roots and, you know, mismanagement, not having enough funds that killed that whole little side, hopefully side industry that I thought that would be social media where people could show things mass roots really started to take off like the first year or two uh but i guess at the end of the day to to host all that information as things started to grow uh, it's just astronomical what um what it costs to to maintain that kind of stuff and so here we are back to instagram um where i feel like everybody doesn't really want to be on there anymore uh myself included i mean it's just it's a necessary evil because of it's effective that's where everybody's at yeah, man, the Instagrams, you know, gosh, I love I love sharing the content, man. I love all the guys I've met, I've met along, on there. It's just, it's like a gift and a curse. Like, the, I, I love that I've grown from just, I don't know, my first post was probably about a bird sitting on my fence in my backyard, you know, a few years ago. And I love that I've grown and increased the followers. But I think the guys, you guys got to understand that folks that are, that are, you know, we're, we're, we're teaching. It's difficult to get hit with a lot of questions that we say over and over and over. And that's where we, you know, I want you to meet me halfway. You know what I mean? I put, I take time to put all this shit out here. Duke puts time, time putting stuff out there. Everyone's taking their time to put it out there. So, you know, maybe instead of just immediately, if the guy gives you a tidbit and you don't know about it, maybe go search it first. You don't have to. He He's dropped you the knowledge, right? He gave you the seed. So you don't necessarily have to go right back to that guy and say, well, can I also have some water for my seed? You know, go outside of him now. Start seeking shit out. I told you aloe, honey, and cinnamon. Look it up. You know what I mean? Don't trust what I'd say. You know what I mean? Don't don't put your whole grow on my what I say. You know, take a piece of what I say and try it. Say, oh, shit, that works. Now I'm going to do it more. You know, and that goes for everybody out there, guys. There's a lot of guys making a lot of claims out here. And there's a lot of younger folks who think that because this guy in this position is making this claim, that it must be valid and it must be something that I need to put my money into or my, you know, or, or buy or, or, or whatever. Um, but I, I just encourage everybody, man, research that stuff, man. If a guy is, I don't care if he's got a million followers and he's doing something, read and research what happens if you do this in soil. How does this affect plants? And then, and then dig deep into it, man, and seek that knowledge. And even question the person. Say, hey, man, how, why do you, you know, why do you say this works? So, you know, but I, 
our industry will get stronger when everyone is held accountable and called out on bullshit. And then also everyone, you know, gets back to that, you know, being helpful, you know, helping out like we're doing on this show. So when you guys hear something on this show, share it, you know, and, and share the show if you like it. And if you think we're spreading good knowledge. I think our community is kind of like, uh, like comedy people when sometimes people steal jokes and individuals don't want to call that out. Uh, and then you maybe our industry needs to have the Joe Rogan, Carlos Mencia moment uh, where he is called out. And then people find out what behind the scenes, what is going uh, around. So, um, yeah, man, it, it, it is kind of silly what some what some people are getting away with uh, within the community. So uh, just again, shout out to Duke. Shout out to people that continue to come on here, um, you know, there's probably a million things that he would love to be doing. He's stuck at, at a halfway house, um, but uh, he's still going out of his way to continue to give back to the community, uh, which again, I feel like is, that's a rare individual, you know, it, it's a rare breed that, that people conduct themselves the way uh, that that Duke does from when you meet him two years ago or whenever uh, to, to now, you know, I was able to meet him in 2018. He still talks the same way, you know, but on the forums and stuff, I feel like you had known him for, for years on end. He's, he's one of those that was on there as well, uh, giving away knowledge um, extremely freely because he was the one that was also talking about grocery stores, you know, especially in the forums. I felt like sometimes there are people, but behind the scenes, they would talk about products, you know, granted, they're, they're just trying to help out. But at the same time, for the ones that want to learn a, to grow like more like a living soil, especially at, at that point at, at your uh, career, uh, you don't really want the training wheels of the bottles anymore. Like you, you're almost willing to kind of fuck up or maybe have some deficiencies as long as you feel like you got the playbook. Right. So we're not throwing we're not throwing like 100 percent completion passes. But at the same time, you know, if we're out there 90, 95 percent. Uh, we have a, a extremely viable business or extremely viable um, medicine, uh, medicinal aspect to add to our family and friends. That is a skill set that that I hope we all. Uh, hell yeah, brother, it is a skill set that I hope that uh, that we all continue to pass on and, and give to others because uh, if if we're not farming medicinal cannabis and the and the and the large companies are just going to continue to pump out the boof. Uh, and everyone's only concerned about, you know, price. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me because some of the people that talk about how important nutrition is, I know that they don't smoke that way. Or if you have a family, I know that it's hard. It's extremely hard to, to smoke. So, Duke, now that you're back, buddy, I, hopefully we can uh, really ro rock, you know, rock with you on, on a variety of different uh, subjects because – um, there's just a, a few other things that I wanted to talk about. And I, I gave you a tip of the hat again to the uh, – um, secondhand sandwiches, I think you called it, and the uh, chicken beer. Uh, there was a question right before uh, you had you had to leave for a little bit. Uh, I think it was more like, have you been messing around with LEDs before your hiatus? Uh, and if so, like, what are your thoughts on that? Uh oh, we got audio, audio issue. Can, are, can you thumbs up us if you can hear Duke? You can hear us. Okay, we're not able to hear you at the moment, unfortunately. We we can uh, readjust, reset. This one's for the books, Chad. I know. It's uh, it, it it's almost a Friday the thirteenth. No. Exactly. Hopefully, he'll get it on soon. Yeah, well, <laughs> I love LEDs, man. I think I'm 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 hot on them. Man. I think they're wonderful. Yeah, I mean, when they first came out, they were kind of common. They were shit. Yeah, yeah the blurples and all that yeah, was horrible. I never got into it back then. It was like everybody everybody had an LED company or something. Yeah, trash. Still can't hear them. That's what when I left, I had to readjust my mic too on the settings. Yeah, you have to go through it because that happens with my mic. It's probably going to happen here in a second. So while they're working on that, Marco, uh, some of the, the genetics also that Duke's kind of run through is uh, the G13. Had you ever heard any of that lore 
Um, yeah. Supposedly it was from Mississippi and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like government lab. About government yeah. labs. Yeah. I did hear all that, man. Um, that's just legendary shit right there. <laughs> Well, looks like every, uh, just, Brian's dropping out now. his microphone. Hey, Duke is back. All right. Yeah, I figured it out. I got up in here into these settings. Yeah. Fucking, yeah, man. Um, yeah, LEDs, uh, like when they first come out, it's just like really anything, man. Like it just takes time. And just like anything, you know, people are just going to be in a rush to put out the, uh, <clears throat> they want to be the first people to, to do it. So. You know, they're always going to have kinks, you know, it doesn't matter if it's an Xbox or electric car or any type of vehicle or anything, you know, they're always got to have to, you know, work the, work the bugs out. So the concept of it all, like, really was cool because the, the amount of spectrum that could be controlled. My only really thing that, that I didn't like about it was the, uh, the, the light penetration that they offered at first. Um it, you know, you could change your whole growth style around it and do good, but, you know, um, it just wasn't where I wanted to see it. Right before I went away, they uh, they were doing a whole lot whole lot of stuff with it, and I was actually seeing some, some really interesting things. I was like, all right, now they're starting to look like something, you know, something I would use. And now um, I was checking out a lot of the, uh, the Illuminar stuff um, and people rocking out with it. And I mean, it, it looks like it looks like something I'm gonna delve into, you know, once uh, once I'm able to do that, you know. I'm good. I appreciate it. Thank you, though. Yeah, I got. Hey, I went forever, Duke. I ran HPS forever, bro. I just like last couple of years, recently, just went to the new LED stuff, and it's it's wonderful, man. It's really nice, man. And now. They've got some new stuff that's the spectrum tuning, you know, kind of mm -hmm. you want quarter inner nodes, you want longer inner nodes, you know. So it's, yeah. it's getting pretty wild, man. It's new, new stuff. I like it. It's kind of revolutionary. So I think that's the yeah. next wave in our industry, you know. Yeah, it is, man. And like used to be before, like you, you would have to switch your your lamps out um, to 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 do what you're wanting to do. Like the last, you know, like 10, 14 days, I always wanted to switch to like, you know. Back in the old days, switch back to metal halide, yeah. and now they had these 10k high blues you would switch to to really get that that frost to pop at the end. Um, yeah, now that you can just adjust it, click on the driver to adjust your spectrum, like that's that's cool yeah. as shit. Wow. <laughs> like low heat production, you know, more energy efficient, like you know, it's tough to beat. Now you're getting the light penetration with it, like. <laughs> You know, it's it's changing it, changing the game. So I'm I'm more than happy to start uh starting to go that way anyhow. Well, like you had mentioned, Marco, there's still a lot of people that just were rocking with the HPSs. That's how they their setup was. Uh a mutual friend of our ours, of the show and uh of Duke and myself uh is Sasquatch. Uh, I feel <laughs> like he was uh, another guy that was able to kind of like break down really basic shit. Uh, talk about why he chose your genetics, Duke, uh, why he was running basic uh, HPS lights. Uh, and then he had this big ass greenhouse. Uh, and I was fortunate enough to go over there and hang out with him for a few days. And uh, that's a wild motherfucker, man. You know, it was yeah. brutal cold. And this dude's telling me to cross. A, it felt like a river. You know, I mean, the, it was current was quick. Uh, but it, you know, he's just, uh, he's on another level, man. And I, I'm sure yeah. that he's excited that you're out as well. Cause that's another genuine dude that I just feel like yeah. is going out of his way to just try to grow medicine. And, and, uh, he's got a little piece of paradise, paradise, in my opinion, uh, uh, that little farm, if you've ever seen it. Yeah, man. He's, he's just a good, good all around dude. It's like, those are people you definitely want to, um, you know, surround yourself with, you know, you got a lot of heart. And a good heart at that. Um, plus, you know, he's hella, hella awesome at what he does too, you know. And I always like wild people anyway. I don't know. I don't know why, but you know, I like uh I like people like that that are just uh, genuine, you know what I mean? They're not trying to win a popularity contest or anything, they're just gonna be themselves and be good people, you know. So yeah, he's definitely he's definitely an awesome one for sure. Yeah, man, and he had it figured out. He was 
<clears throat> turn into stuff into carts and those carts were like usually when you hit a cart that feels like uh soccer mom weed you know i mean it's yeah. there but there's not that punch uh, and his stuff yeah. was just next level uh i really yeah. enjoyed uh, uh being able to partake in your genetics and then his his time and effort um and it was just a, a wonderful experience talk about you know kicking yourself in the face <laughs> Something else that I liked about uh, that I learned about you from him was, you know, talking about the Screaming Eagle and how that's more of like a fam family strain for you and why you named it that way for anxiety. It kind of sounds the opposite. Uh, I, th I believe you also have mentioned before that it's uh, for like PTSD. So I kind of wanted to run down that road because I know uh, I've experienced in life, man, if there's two people or two you know, two ways to help people in life. It's either kids or veterans. Uh, it's really hard to, you know, not to want to be able to do those things. So the fact that you were giving away those uh, extremely valuable genetics so that veterans could uh, farm for themselves if they wanted to uh, definitely needed to be mentioned today. Yeah. Like, you know, that was always the thing is like when it came to, uh, you know, PTSD and stuff like that, um, the big thing, like, I mean, back in the day, they just, you know, they didn't really acknowledge it. They just call it shell shot, you know, they to walk it off or whatever. Um, and, you know, as time's gone by, there's like, yeah, it's definitely a thing. <clears throat> but their their deal was like, all right, well, let's take these pills, you know, zombify yourself. And, you know, that, that's not that's not what most people want to do anyway. So, um I got to, you know, kind of guinea pig myself because I had my own, my own, you know, bouts with it. And um, just trying to find something where, you know, I can go out to Walmart or in crowds and not, not just feel so, so fucking uncomfortable. So anxiety, PTSD was like, a, you know, a, a, the, the main end goal there. Um, I had experienced certain things that really worked very well. And it kind of led me, led me down that path. Um, like my whole, my whole family, um, as far back as it can go, they've all been uh, war fighters and shit, and have uh, all suffered from that as well. So, um, the name Screaming Eagle, like my dad, he was in the 101st Airborne, um, and they're they're the Screaming Eagles. So, um, I know, like he he suffered with it pretty bad but he was from that era where you know you didn't acknowledge it you know you didn't talk about it um it was like you know considered like i don't want to say the wrong thing like but like people you know might think like it would look at somebody would look at them negatively or like they were weak or something like that so um you know it was just one of them kind of unspoken unspoken things so it was kind of like a, a thing for him you know with the with the name and then, you know, as the process went on and I really had something that was working good for me, I was like, well, maybe it's going to work good for others. So everybody I knew that was dealing with the same shit, I was like, you know, here's here's a sack, here's a sack, here's a sack. Like, try it out, get and pick yourself. And they were like, it's working. It was beautiful. So I was like, all right, cool. So when I had all of them, I wasn't even selling them. I was just trying to seek people out with those issues and uh, give them give them the seats because another thing for me was like having something to do like a hobby something productive um you know was, was another a very medicinal thing especially growing just the act of you know just growing was medicinal all, all its own you know very calming so um you know the the, the combo of that was uh definitely um pretty awesome and then it was later on you know people would just hit me up like crazy and um you know i had like a handful of them you know left and everything and actually let the general public get it because there were a lot of people that had people to take care of in that regard that uh their their people weren't you know on on media to, to even reach out to me so they were getting it and and then you know taking taking care of their their friends and family so like uh um i almost said his name was sasquatch there he's uh you know he was one of those people like he had old timer old vietnam vet buddy that he got him and he was you know helping out and hooking up with him so that was uh that was that whole that whole project and i took a 
took a hot minute to to make it, but it was really really well worth it at the end, you know. Yeah, man. Because again, we're getting back to this is medicine, and then for some people, they're able to kick the opioid or or dial it down dramatically and then kick it off uh, when they have access to uh, quality cannabis, especially cannabis that's uh, hopefully cultivated. Uh, for, for you know, uh, to take away their ailments. I know PTSD um, in reality seems to affect way more people than than mentioned, and maybe it is kind of like hey, how you had said before, it's it's pretty hard to admit uh, mental issues. Like people can talk all day about certain aspects, health issues, but that's like the last one that people want to kind of admit to. So if they do have access to anything but um, basically synthetic heroin. Um, you know, I, I commend people that want to be able to reach out and do that. But the the VA and a few other things, I, I believe that they are the ones prescribing that to them and saying that if you choose uh, cannabis, that you actually lose all of your benefits. Um, so if that's not correct, I'd love to be corrected on that. But from what I understand, that that's how they treat veterans. Well, that is true, uh, Brian, uh, to, to the most extent. And uh, Duke made a great point that a lot for a lot of those guys, the, the act of the farming is the is the medicine, too. You know what I mean? So not only are you so you're kind of getting it on both ends, you're growing it, getting that medicine and then you're you got the medicine at the end. But um, for the VA, I can speak on this. My dad is a veteran. Um, so until the law just changed in Virginia, his doctor he would say, well, you shouldn't test positive for cannabis. Now that the law has changed, they can test positive for cannabis without any kind of issue. So that's a good thing. So that's, that's dope. And he's happy as fuck about that. <laughs> I mean, especially as you're older in life, like right. you should be able to choose. Exactly. Um, if they're going to pump you with something, uh, cannabis should be at least uh, you should try it. You know, For a long time, my parents were anti-cannabis, yet they still... Uh, at, at one point in life, were forcing me to take Adderall, you know. So I don't, I don't think that everybody understands. Like just because it's coming from a doctor, maybe more lately, uh, there's been a whole awakening, Duke, since you've been away of um, the fact that nobody talks about the immune system. And I don't want to get too deep into all that, obviously, but uh, just that nobody talks about how magical that is. And and then you know, if you can continue to to feed it. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, MMA fighters, bodybuilders and stuff say that they've started gotten they've gotten themselves into gardening, um, you know, making a little garden because they're starting to see for themselves that plant nutrition and overall health nutrition are basically one and the same. Uh, you can see that once you improve the, the gut health, once you improve the root health, uh, the, the plant perks up and then the human being perks up. Um, and that's why I feel like um, I wanted to maybe even talk about G13. Uh, Duke, uh, the, the lure of that, uh, is, is that true that that probably came from a government facility and was it living it up to the hype? Cause what, from what I understand, uh, you had the, the real deal. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> as far as the old story out, shit, man, I had no idea. Um, it might be, maybe not. I, I don't know. Um, but whatever, wherever it came from, yeah, it was truth, you know. It, it definitely had a lot of, a lot of medicinal benefit, and everything. And um, the the cutting I used was uh, the Airborne in that Screaming Eagle project, and also that that played perfect with the name too. Is 101st Airborne Screaming Eagles, and it was a dude that used to be on the on the boards named Airborne, um, but it was Airborne G13. And that was uh, from Neville. Uh, he did a G13 with uh, NL2. And, you know, dude had grown him out, and that was his keeper. Airborne's keeper was, was that. So it has, you know, it said G13 NL2 hybrid. And, uh, man, it's, you know, it's awesome. That's for damn sure. And it was a great, uh, a great, great medicinal thing just alone. And it was a good building block to, uh, to, to work with to, to make the uh, make the eagle, and I, and I bring that up because it seems like uh, the powers that be have known that this is medicinal, uh, and how easily uh, the backyard farmer could could cultivate this for themselves, alleviate uh, a lot of ailments for themselves. 
seems to be partly one of the reasons why. I mean, we could go down a, a variety of reasons on, on why things became illegal. Uh, but the, the fact that the cannabinoids, I feel like, the real medicinal value, I, I feel like, is what the um, pharmaceutical companies don't want the general public to know about. I, I don't think they care about everybody getting stoned. It's just the fact that now that you're starting to change people's lives, pull them off of those pharmaceuticals that they're getting pumped with or fed fed through. Uh, and they're now able to make a, a conscious health decision for themselves and say, I understand what you're saying about the research, but I feel a certain way when I take cannabis and I'm going to choose this part for my life because I know that this is benefiting me. And that was something that I felt like when I was taking Adderall, I had to stand up and kind of say that for myself. Like, if you want, if I'm forced to take something, then cannabis is what I want to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we know how it started, Brian, like not to get too deep into that, but race is why cannabis is illegal. You know, at least they used it as a tool against the Mexicans and the, and the other minorities, of, you know, back in the day. So we all know that. But, um, yeah, definitely. The, uh, I think they're threatened for sure, um, because I like we all know, man, I think this plan is a healing of the nation. If, if they put enough money into it and develop it, we could probably cure just about anything. So my little two cents, Duke, what you got, bro? Man, I've, I've seen this, the, the stuff people in their own home making Rick Simpson oil and what that's done. I can only imagine, you know, if you had like full on, you know, all the power and research behind it. I mean, I think, you know, sky's the limit. You know, I think you can do a whole lot more. I don't think we've even come close to finding that the full potential of, you know, everything that it can do. Cause, I mean, just from textiles, you know, rope, clothing, you know, the, the oils, you know, and just the nutritional things that you can, you know, derive out of it. Um, there's just so many, so many, so many things you can do with it. So there's so many benefits, but, you know, we live in this, like, world where, you know, the government's like, yeah, you can hit them with all the science and everything in the world, and they're just like, no. It's like, well, why? Nah, you know, we just, because we say so. And people, you know, just kind of accept it. You know, it's always what's going in my mind is like, how can you, how can you deny it or like, you know, continue to keep doing it? It's like, it's all right there. And they're just like, oh, you know, this guy's fuck you. That's why we're good. Or it's going to stay illegal. So it always just blows my mind how, <laughs> why we're still, you know, sitting, but at least we're, we're making little steps, you know, it's going in the right direction. I never thought I'd live long enough to see any of it wreck, let alone Virginia of all places. Virginia, bro? I mean, whoa. Like, Virginia is yeah. a place where, like, I'm afraid to go in grocery stores. Like, they would stay yeah, down yeah. the box, man. Like, you didn't even do that. There was a dude up in Fredericks, outside of Fredericksburg. He had, a, a like, a grocery store in his house. And he's and, and, and I've, you've probably been there, but, like, everybody would go to this guy because it's like you couldn't trust one of the store. You couldn't order nothing. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't I never heard of that, Marco. Like a underground hydro. Yeah, hydro store. It's, yeah. He's it's, it's a guy, it's man. He was from Lebanon, and he had the the coolest fig trees. His whole yard, but it was like, and if you go like back in the day, if you had to look on the internet to try to find you know nutrients to grow, and it, somehow he popped up, man. And I just made a relationship. And went to that guy, but everybody went to that one dude, man. That's why. Yeah, I mean, he had to. Because if you were wanting to do anything, uh, uh, if you ordered something, Thank you. you're you're liable to get you know raided. Um, if you went to one of the quote unquote legit stores or whatever, um, there's a good chance the DEA was watching you. You were gonna get indicted. And just so happens, I had a buddy that said a place was cool. I went there to get some panda film, and not long after that, you know, he you know I was getting indicted. So confidential informant number one was like a best friend forever to get wrapped up in his shit. And, you know, he just fit into his time, uh, told on me. And confidential informant number two for them to make their case was the owner of the hydroponic store. Turned out he had been burning dudes left and right. And um, he'd been, you know, one of their paid, paid dudes for a long time, right for the, right for the DEA. And uh, it was crazy because when I was pulling my time back then, um, his best friend that they've been best friends forever. Not only did he burn him, but he actually approached him, said, Hey, 
I want to set up a house. You want to run it? I'll supply all the equipment and everything. You do it. And he was like, all right, yeah, cool, best friend. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. And he furnished it pretty good with hidden microphones and cameras and everything else. And they hit him for every single plant that they could count on camera that he ever did and nailed him. And he went to, I think he did like, I think he got hit with 10 years because like the total count after it was said and done was like a few thousand plants because they were counting every clone, hey, every up? seedling, every, 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 you know what I mean? All right, so. Mike, doing all right. Yeah, that's real, man. Um, same. I had a buddy the same way, man. He got really, you know how this game is, man. You, you love it. Like, we grow for the medicinal of it, you know what I mean? And that's why everyone falls in love with it. You love growing the plant, and it's awesome, and you get to use it. And so I had this buddy that got really excited, man. He, was, he had good money, and he went and up, took a whole pickup truck load, you know, loaded up with equipment, lights, all that shit, man. I told him to be careful, and he went and bought it from the right in the middle of the, you know, local shop. And um, next thing you know, got raided and boom, 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 you know, just for trying to grow medicine. You know, this is, this is such bullshit. So I'm so happy we've come this far. Hopefully this new government or uh, uh, the governor and all, and they do the right thing here in Virginia, man. And I think going back to y'all talking earlier about craft cannabis, and I've been thinking about this a lot, man, because I've seen how they come and they roll into your state from out of state and then they just infiltrate and take over everything. So, man, what I'm focusing on right now is just a group of guys. We're focusing on hardcore craft cannabis. You know what I mean? Virginia is a craft I and mean, Richmond's a craft beer town. We're like always number one fucking in the country and craft beer. So I feel like Richmond, man, we're going to really hold down. We're going to maintain that craft. Um, Northern Virginia, I'm a little bit afraid for them. I feel like they're going to be like corporates going to boom them out up there. But hopefully we can draw a line, man, and, um, and, and keep it craft, man. You know what I mean? And that's key. Uh, so I wanted to talk real quick about uh, the, the Dominion skunk because I feel like, you know, obviously, uh, how can you talk to Duke Diamond and not talk about uh, the skunk? Uh, and then I was hoping, if you're okay with this, man, I was uh, wanting you to give some stories for the children, uh, some shit that actually happens behind the scenes in prison that will hopefully uh, wake up some of, the, some of the people that are out there living like uh, there's no tomorrow. Um, with this show, Marco and I, uh, we want to kind of give back and educate on a variety of things. Uh, we kind of dipped our toe in that Duke a couple of weeks ago when we were kind of giving guidance on um, how, how to drive certain things across states and, and, and you know, maybe really uh, pushing the envelope a little bit too far on that. But I feel like with the stories, at least people can see that like that it really is no joke and there is a, a huge difference uh, between getting locked up for a DUI in jail. Uh, and then actually uh, going to the, the you know, the, the proverbial big house uh, where you actually have to fucking man up or you are going to get eaten alive in there. So uh, let's talk about uh, one more good thing and then maybe uh, sprinkle some bullshit on there in life uh, so that people can th really think things through when they're when they're pushing the envelope. Well, um, I think a lot of it starts with people don't don't really realize like you'll hear stories and like oh well there's got to be something more to it than that and they, they'll, they'll blow it off and um what people don't understand about um rico and interstate commerce and they don't understand about conspiracies right so um you know without going any further into that yet just know that if you know anybody that's like really fucking up, right? Um, you know, you, you got you got to distance yourself from it, um, or not, you know, just not be involved in it at all. But it's just as simple as somebody might be into just name whatever, whatever you can think of, um, and they call you up looking for a bag. All right. Um, they get hit you can you can find yourself in in their conspiracy um there's different uh, levels to it um a leadership role kingpin whatever you are down on the tier um 
the fact is they don't actually have to um, catch you with anything. They just need two people agreeing to that's what you did or what you had at this given date and time. They'll add it all up, and it's called relevant conduct. And then you're going to be sentenced uh, under a mandatory minimum. Um, and furthermore, it goes up from there based on um, relative uh, relative conduct. And you're looking at minimum 10 years, but most of the time 20, 30, 40, 50 years of life. Um, and it can happen just, just, as, just as quick as that. I mean, in the blink of an eye. And you would think, oh, that's unconstitutional. That can't happen. These pens are full of people. It happens every day, every single day. And I know I didn't know anything about it until I was like the first time. Um, you know, I, I'll distance myself if I find out somebody's on, uh, you know, drugs or anything or, you know, something like I can't talk to them because just like that, you can get wrapped up in that, you know, on a second. Oh, gee. You had it. They hit you a conspiracy, didn't they? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 255 months. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, you just get wrapped up. Just just, just because somebody says something. So, um, you gotta, you, you gotta be, you gotta be, gotta be careful. Um, and they're, you know, everybody thinks, oh, well, you know, the big government, they're looking for these big, these big guys, you know, this and that, um, man, they'll, they'll snatch you up and fill up a bed quick as shit. I, mean, I know a lot of guys, man, they weren't, they weren't doing anything big and, you know, they got, they got slung in there. So, um, they don't care. They don't give a fuck. Um, they're going to sling you in the pen and, you know, you can fight all you want. You're, they got a 99% conviction rate. Um, even if you're in the right, they're, they're still going to sling it to your ass. Um, and it's not, it's not good. It's just not good. So you got to re really mind your company because um, you can get wrapped up in some shit and not even realize it's happening. Not even realize you're doing anything. You might, you're probably not even doing anything. Just talking to somebody on the phone can get you, get you thrown away. So you gotta, you really gotta watch that. So um, it ain't like the old days either. Um, there's a lot of informants out there. Um, I guess at some point snitching became like acceptable. So um, you, you get a lot of that out there. So dudes that used to live by the code, you know, like they're far and few between now. So you're not really gonna find those real stand up motherfuckers like like you used to. You know, it's a dying breed. So if you think like you're coming up now or whatever and this dude's solid, it's like he used to be like, Yeah, man, he's solid. What until? You know, that's the key word. The key fucking word. Until. Until what? Till he's broke. Till he's jealous. You know what I'm saying? Until he's looking at twenty, thirty, fifty years. So some dudes can't even do a year. They're looking at a year. You know, until what? You know what I mean? And then before you know it, you're hearing them, oh, yeah, you know, I had a good lawyer. Oh, I got lucky. I'm like, yeah, you got lucky, all right? Lucky's in the pen doing fucking life now because this motherfucker couldn't keep his mouth shut, wrap somebody up in some shit that they didn't even have nothing to do with. And boom, you know, he's walking around and somebody's rotting away, you know, rotting away in the fucking, in the pen. And, you know, it's a, it's a bad, it's a bad deal. And it's like a part of society that people don't, they don't see, you know, because it's behind walls, behind fences. Um, you know, people, people, people just don't realize how quick, how quick your life can just be over. You know, just, you know, it's, it's really bad. Now uh, I could go on all night with different horror stories and shit like that. But in a nutshell, that's that's it. Mind your company, and um, you know, don't don't get wrapped up in that shit. You know. Um, as far as like inside, yeah, I mean, um, it's really hard to explain to people who've never experienced it, I guess, even something even close to it. Um, it's just a really, really strange um, environment. It's like, uh, it's like its own world. Um, things that apply here don't apply in there. Um, 
it's just full of, uh, I can only just think of words, you know, it's misery, um, hatred, paranoia, pain, um, and, you know, just the most extreme, extreme violence. Um, it's, it's not a good, it's not a good spot. So, um, you know, it's just packed full of, you know, very, for the most part, very violent, you know, alpha males, you know what I mean? You're, you're in a jungle of nothing, nothing but that. And, you know, certain people are just, you know, they're always looking for control. Some people just like to kill people. That's just what they do. That's their, that's their, that's just what they like to do, you know? So, you know, you're, you're surrounded with, you know, some of the worst of the worst. Not everybody's like that, of course, but, you know, that's just something that you gotta, you gotta contend with. And when you're in there, you know, um, you're, you're gonna have to kind of leave behind a lot of things that humanize you, you know, maybe in, in regular normal life, but you're not in regular normal life anymore. You're there and um, you got to focus on that. And you're going to have to, uh, like I said, you're going to have to sack the fuck up or, you know, you're going to get eaten alive, like I said, and you're going to fucking die. Um, you know, so throwing hands, knife play, all, all that shit, you know, whether you want to or not, I mean, that's, you know, ultimately that's up to you, you know, but, uh, you know, it's there and it's waiting for you. Um, it's not going away anytime soon. So just make sure, uh, you know, make sure that you're tighten up, man. You know, don't, uh, don't think like, you know, you're gonna, you know, do this and that and do it forever. I mean, I've known, you know, I grew up in a, in a pretty wild place. And I've known a lot of, a lot of, a lot of dudes to do it up big and, um, I can't count on one that ever got away with it. Some just get to do it for longer than others. But ultimately, at the end of it, that that lifestyle, I mean, it's gone. It's gone. People tell too much. Um, there's cameras everywhere. These people are well-funded. I mean, you're just, you're just not going to do it. And it's just not a good way to, you know, it's just not a good way to live, you know. So just work hard. Um, do your thing. And just you know, live live a good life where where you don't have to, you know, put yourself in that position and have to deal with that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Um, it's just it's it's not good. It's not good for nobody. Um, and it's just uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a weird thing to have to explain, but um, I guess I don't uh, I don't really have all the all the words for that uh, right now. No, you so, exp- you know, dude, you're yeah that's if there's we always say gold bars on the future cannabis project man and if people don't understand that that's a that's a next level bar obviously because uh, the the no one really thinks about the risks everybody always thinks about that they're going to get away with it Uh, and most people don't move like chess moves uh, when they're doing that and like you had mentioned the bigger you get the jealousy comes out uh, and every nobody wants to see you shine if you're shining for too long Oh, uh, so yeah. So, what do you like? What do you really think about um, where things are going? Like, I know, like f- from the inside, it kind of reflects society. Um, sometimes it magnifies it. Sometimes I heard it's like, uh, you know, you can be in a certain spot where uh, it, things aren't popping off as much as they maybe should, because everybody kind of respects every, one another. Uh, but yeah from the outside 2020 2021 there was there were riots there was all these things that were going on uh, i feel like more and more people when you see them they won't even look you in the eye anymore at the grocery store seems like we've been divided did you guys feel like there was a upper echelon of that kind of hatred and just maybe weirdness to humanity uh, while you were locked up as well oh yeah i mean um you know, it's, and like I said, it goes back to <clears throat> things that are hard to explain. Um, you know, some people are very, um, they're very sensitive, but um, I mean, there's, I mean, for those people, I mean, all I can say is like, there's the way you fucking want to be, you know what I mean, in the world, and then there's just the fucking way that it is, right? So um, don't, don't be sensitive about this because this is just this is just what it is and how it is and how it's going to be and um you know if you feel like you know you can go in there and change the world like go ahead 
and uh, you'll you'll be dead before the nine o'clock count. Um, it's it's you know prisons are already very very segregated by um, you know race, uh, segregated by gangs um, and groups groups of people. Um, so anytime you have say like a riot on one yard and word gets over to other that you know this group of people was stabbing up this group of people it's all at war on 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 that yard too so you know you got that um if you got any animosity any racial tensions which are already at you know very high inside um anything on the outside is just going to be amplified even more um it's just not a it's just not a not a good not a good good thing um and then to, to cap it all off like you know it goes without saying like you know we don't we don't like fucking cops right so and they especially don't like us so when this whole uh this whole um blue lives matter shit and cops fucking killing people and getting away with it and everything um you know they were they were definitely you know trying to trying to flex and and make their shit um you know, even, even, you know, more so than they already were. So it leads to fighting with the cops a lot more too. Uh, cops getting stabbed up and everything, which ultimately, you know, that's going to come back on you. Um, you know, they're going to make your life hell. So no matter which way you're looking is just, uh, you know, total, uh, total chaos, um, from, from every, every angle that you can think of. And, um, you know, lots of lots of rioting, uh, lots of you know more hatred than uh, than what was normally normally going on. Um, and like it, you know, if you ever hear it, you know, people just you know, it's just called politics. That's what that's what um, you know prison is. You know, groups of people trying to live with each other in a you know the best way that you can. But you know, oftentimes you know something something's gonna pop off and happen. That's just the nature of it. And when it does, you know, you either, you know, you're either going to live or you're going to die, you know. Uh, some people, I guess, are real good about, you know, just, you know, reading it, you know, and they go hide somewhere. But um, ultimately, people afterwards are going to be like, yeah, you know, where, where were you at? And then your own people are going to, you know, stomp you out, stab you up. So um, it's just it, man, when you're when you're in the, the belly of the beast, man, you're, you're there. There's no calling. You know, somebody like, yeah, I, I want to go home. You know, they don't have like magical I'm sorry papers that you're going to fucking sign and you're just going to go. You know, you got your date and it's up to you to get through each day the best way that you can and live through that so that you can make it to that date and, you know, go on, go on home and uh, just try not to let it take away, you know, pieces of you, you know, or too much, you know. And uh, try to try to get back in one piece, and uh, you know, and then just move on, move forward, and like you know, pass a little knowledge on, you know, to other people so they don't end up in the in the same uh, same boat. That's about that's about it, man. Yeah, man, I I really appreciate you taking the time to explain this kind of stuff because I know for certain that a lot of people don't realize even when if you get a year sentence, two year sentence. That like you had mentioned, the politics, you're not going to change that. Uh, so you have to, to choose, ride with it, certain individuals, a riot breaks off. Maybe you did have to, to do something that you normally would have never done in life. Uh, and now you have an extra charge up on that. Uh, so there's just so many things that could happen to your life uh, once you're in there. Um, the jungle is real. And I'm, I'm glad, Duke, that you're giving us an inside look and, and taking the time to explain it without... Any fluff, man. That's just how that shit is in there. It doesn't doesn't really matter your belief systems. This is how the politics are played in this certain facility, and they obviously change from facility faci to facility. So you could uh, have it good in one spot, get moved, and now you got to go through the whole alpha bullshit again and st stand up for yourself and make sure that nobody's gonna fuck with you because obviously if you're weak, now you got at least. You know, if you're in there for two years, it's going to be two years of just people constantly fucking with you or worse. Uh, and obviously, as a grown man, you never want to experience shit like that. Yeah, for sure. And like, that's the thing, like, depending, uh, depending on where 
where you actually end up. You know, it could it could you know be be varied. So like you could end up in a halfway uh like a halfway decent you know decent spot where you know people get along a lot better, or you know you just might walk into something that has been going on for a decade or maybe longer. You know, just strike between um, two groups of people, and you just happen to land in the middle of it that day. It all just jumps off. You don't even know what it's about, what led up to it, and that's just just how it is, you know. Um, or you could just land yourself in the middle of, the, you know, the most rowdy of the rowdy, and it's just like that every day. Or, you know, it just depends, you know, on the day and what's going on. But uh, all the shit happening um, in the uh, in the outside world, it, you know, it damn sure it didn't it didn't help. And then you got some weird you know, virus going around, you know, killing people. And, you know, it's doing the same thing in there and trying not to catch it and watching people drop from it. And this, you know, it's uh, the fucked up thing. I hope, uh, you know, you know none of y'all have to, have to deal with that, you know, so. Um, and and if, not, you, if you are sick, you know, you put, you, let's say you are weak and you push that call button, you know, uh, most of the time they're not. It's not like the cavalry is coming to get you. No, you're, you're gotta probably stay you're, for, not yeah, only you're, for your health, but you're you, you're gonna have to throw hands no matter what. If you've never done that in life, you better start doing push-ups. Oh yeah, like you gotta you gotta for sure you gotta stay uh, stay fit, stay strong. Um, you know, and stay very very observant and everything. And uh, you know, it's it's. Um, like when those riots pop off, I mean, it depends where it's at. Like, you know, they got snipers and guard towers. They might just start treating and killing people out there. Um, you know, if it's inside of a unit, you know, it's probably going to go on and on. It's going to be a while before they come in there and gas the place out or start shooting people. So, um, you know, and a lot can happen in one second, let alone, you know, any elapsed uh, period of time. So, um, yeah, it's it's not... You know, it's not not safe, you know, so and, you know, you definitely don't want to have to rely on, on you know, some some fucking employee to, you know, because they, they don't give a fuck. They don't right. really care. You, know, right. you got COVID or whatever. They, their biggest concern is like, oh, I don't want to catch that shit. You know, I mean, they don't they don't give a fuck. Medical staff doesn't care. Uh, that's the thing. Nobody nobody cares. You know, that's the the one thing, you know, just, you know, nobody gives a fuck. So, um, once you're there, you know, it's kind of, it's just kind of on you, you know, you just kind of got to, you know, go through the motions, do the best you can do and stay healthy. You know, people complain all the time. Like, Oh, Oh, really? I uh, shouldn't have got locked up. Dude. Cause here we, here we are. You know? Yeah, man, I I really appreciate the candid aspect to, to kind of how you're talking about this, because uh, I don't think a lot of people get a behind the scenes kind of thing of what really goes on. And unfortunately, there's a lot of shows lately that have been on which um, just show jail aspects and kind of show kind of silly little fights and stuff. But I don't yeah. I've never really seen anything that I felt like, you know, warranted what really went on. Yeah, like, you know. Um, they got those little little jail shows and like that's just you know little little petty you know little county jail fights and I mean shit can pop off in the uh, in the counties and everything but um, you know like uh, in the pen and everything it's way larger scale um, a lot of uh, a lot of weapons and things like that come up the woodwork so um, it's way 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 more uh, way more serious. So, um, like a full scale riot is it's fucking insane, you know. And um, you know, you get hundred, two hundred people all killing each other at the same time, um, and then the cops trying to kill everybody too. Like, I mean, it's it's pretty, uh, it's pretty hectic, you know. And then once it's done, you know, there's the aftermath of that. So um, when it comes off of the lockdown, you know, it's right back at it again. Or, small isolated stabbings and shit, you know, guys seeking uh, revenge or whatever retribution. 
you know. Well, do you mind sharing a, the riot story? Do you mind like kind of maybe just sharing an overview? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be detailed or like how how does um, a riot pop off? It maybe is a better question. Um, it could happen. It could happen in a a, a variety of ways, man. Um, it could be just as simple as someone disrespect someone and these group of people um they'll call it a car you know what i mean it might not be a gang but it's a group of people so one car might not discipline their guy which ultimately leads to the other car that's been disrespected um it could have been just as simple as somebody taking something or just talking out their mouth um and then that just leads into a, a something bigger um it could be guys you know like trying you know a power struggle it could be one guy losing his shit you know and he goes and stabs one guy off and then that leads into something bigger um it could be stealing drugs i mean it you know if things don't that's why they call them politics if things aren't ironed out and straightened out at a smaller level they they they, they just blow into proportion out of proportion and um you know everybody has nothing to do but time and think violence and and plan for it you know like you're literally there all the time so all you got to do is plan shit out make weapons and, you know so um all these different factors can um can lead up to it um you know i've been in quite a few you know um uh, the one, you know, I was telling you about, I mean, it's like a hundred men in that one. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'd really even get into it right now for real. Uh, I don't really know how to, um, I don't really know how to put all that into words for real, but, um, you know, it's pretty bad. Um, you know, you had a bunch of people die, um, blood everywhere, um, over just and that's kind know, of where the paranoia guys. comes in right because that could pop off at really any time um, any moment any moment you know marco you're yeah. back buddy yeah man sorry guys i'm back i just fucking not can you turn your phone in? oh you want me to go this way yeah sorry go. about that Man, I, I really do. I, I know I've said this a couple of times, but I, I know that most of the time we I would never be able to talk about this with you. I would never even want to. I just kind of wanted to give a few things out uh, so that people would see the real side of life. Um, yeah. And it, it's always, it always seems so rosy. Like you had mentioned, even when people betray you and that kind of stuff, your, your co-defendants and stuff, those, yeah. those individuals turn super quick. And like you had mentioned, yeah. sometimes it could be almost a silly like a one-year mm -hmm. thing and they'll change your life just so they're not inconvenienced i know a cat that went in this was back in 07 he went in i think he had two and a half years three years um he's still locked up he turned it into 30 something years you know he gets into some shit he stabs a dude up and he's got another five years another one another one another one. and it's just never never ending you know so you know it's easy to get wrapped up and just you just stay there you know um it's 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 a bad it's a bad deal all the way around you know hey just a random question bro did they um were they offering y'all like the vaccine or trying or enforcing y'all or anything like that in there so they they can't like you know legally like force it on you right but they can offer you options <laughs> So it, it kind of makes it like a no, uh, a no brainer. Like, it's like, oh yeah, you can have those and, you know, you'll, you'll be able to uh, avoid quarantines and, you know, you'll be able to get your release to a halfway house and, um, you know, you can, you can do all these things or you cannot get it. And yeah, you can just stay in quarantine. You can't do this. You can't do that. You probably won't get released to a halfway house. If you do get released at any point, you're gonna have to travel back on Con Air again and go to a county. So they make it so it's like 
you know, it's a they whole force your hand. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. at that point when they were offering it and everything, it was like guinea pig stages. So uh, they just want to make sure that it, you know, didn't kill a bunch of people before they start offering it to the general uh, general public. Mm. So, yeah. Man. So, yeah, you know, and a lot of it, you know, it's just uh, it was a lot of bullshit, you know, what they were saying you wouldn't be able to do. And it turned out later, it's like, yeah, that literally had no bearing on it, but you didn't know. Mm-hmm. So you were like, oh, what, what do I do here? So, Sounds you know, like the government right now, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, so you just gotta look out for your, you know, your best interest for your, uh, your, your friends and your family for real. And uh, you know, I said, you know, fuck it, you know, rolling dice, you know, I need to get back home to my family. So uh, I'm a pretty strong dude. I got a hell of an immune system, and uh, you know, I've probably inhaled worse shit than that on construction sites that are in ductwork and everything. You know, mm-hmm. I've been doing enough weed shows and been around the whoop blue and everything. So. I'm like, <laughs> that shit had to build up a ton. So I'm like, fuck it, jab me with it. You know what I mean? We'll just roll the dice and hopefully it doesn't kill me. There and, you go. Uh, yeah, nothing happened to me, but saw a lot of other people get it. I got sick as a dog and all fucked up. But, yeah. Yeah, man. For sure. Yeah. Well, before we uh, kind of finalize things here and can maybe get a few questions in, I had one more question for you, Duke like when it came to your vault and then your other genetics, like what made you say these genetics are vault worthy, uh, where these genetics were, you know, you released to the public in the general manner. Um, vault ones were definitely, um, not one. They were not plain. Two, They were made for, um, they were made more for my purpose and like a project or something like that. Certain ones went on and were great and other projects, um, and some of them, they didn't do great working on and outcrosses and other projects, but standalone, they were just phenomenal. So they ended up, you know, going, going that route, you know, find good homes. Yeah, man. Is one of your requirements, you know, kind of for the vault, like how well that genetics can combine with others and stay dominant? Uh, I heard B Leaf talking about that. He has some like his creatures, like one he could breed with anything, and he's getting those certain traits that he wants, kind of no matter what. Is that one of your yeah. things you look for, bro? Um, depending on the project, yeah. Because some things, it's like I don't want the whole the whole thing. I just want certain attributes out of it, and then you end up using something and it's so fucking dominant. You might as well have just recreated the one the one side of the family. Uh, um, so sometimes it works out depending on what you want to do, and then sometimes you're like, "Oh man, it's just it's just too much." It's like using uh, it's like using jack hair, um, and something, and trying not to have jack hair smell. Mm. It's like it's very very hard, very hard to do. So because most of the time you breed anything with jack hair, it's the progeny is going to come out so smell like jack hair. Mm. Um, same with like Durban, it's the same same type deal. You know? Got you. Yeah. Favorite haze. I don't know, man. The NL5 haze was definitely good. G13 haze was good. Um, man, East Coast dude, that piff dude, that uptown piff from the Bronx up in New York. That stuff was the fucking shit. God damn, that stuff was good. Um, second to that, NL5 haze. I like G13 haze too, but. And L five A's was more I don't know. Something about that incense smell, that frankincense type of type of funk that yeah, used to really do it for me. But that uptown pip, man, that was all right. Details on Granny Skunk. Um I don't know what that means. Um let's see. Yeah, it was really good. There are couple of artists and create one see that. Yes, yes, I am. There's quite a quite a few. Um, but anybody that knows anything about me, man, I keep shit under my hat until I'm ready. Like it's already made, tested, and ready before I even start showing a picture of the process. There's too many between the scammers and people just looking to ride ride your dick. Um, you you got it. You got to keep showing your hat till it's hammer time. LA by the time they even try to claim they're doing this or that, 
I'm already like three steps ahead on other projects and it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, so you just have to kind of, kind of stay tuned and, uh, yeah, you'll see. Favorite top dressing, uh, insect press, earthworm casting combo. Great combo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Increase that fungi big time with that and bacteria. Hmm. That's a that's a tough one. There's a few of them. There's been a few from my from my youth. Um. Man, too many, too many to mention, really. Um. Let's say the all time heartbreaker. I don't know, man. That that cuttlefish hash plant was a kind of heartbreaking. <laughs> so, uh, bourbon poison, blue trichomes. Um, Durban was a was a good one. Um, uh, the effect of it was was the was the main the main thing that used to get me. <clears throat> I used to like. Uh, I mean, used to like. Um, Always, you know, I, I like uh, good sativas. They always got overlooked. Um, anybody's ever had to like do a lot of work and do shit during the day can appreciate a good, uh, good sativa. Um, cultivars that produce like, you know, colorful resins and shit like that, they're always cool, especially like when it's like not water soluble and you got some colorful bubble or colorful rosin. It's just, it's just kind of cool looking, you know. So um selfing's cool um just like any other breeding technique sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh you know your results kind of will vary um sometimes you got an s2 or s3 to really lock something down sometimes when you s1 you know you'll notice things get all stretchy on you or weird or you end up with stuff that's dead on and doesn't produce resin um it's just one of those deals man you you gotta kind of you just got to kind of put yourself out there and try it and see where you're at first um, and, and and go from there. Because just like with, you know, breeding filial or, or back crossing, like it doesn't always exactly work, you know, exactly the way that you, you think it's going to. That's why it's good to have like multiple techniques of getting to a getting to a place. So self endless one of many, many, many options you can use and. It might, it might, it work really awesome. It might be mediocre or just totally just blue bar, man. So it's just one thing. Just give it a shot and see what you, see what you get. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah, the rumors are true. Definitely. I definitely do that. Guilty. Yeah, it works <laughs> great for terpene, terpene production. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's nutrient in it too, you know. Mm -hmm. Black chain nu nutrient film tray. Oh, NFTs. I thought I said nu nutrient film trays. <laughs> uh, beating program. Uh, build a breeding program with a group effort and building a great cultivar. I'm just gonna um, pop in and say that technology is way ahead of me, anyways. <laughs> I didn't know if you'd be familiar with it, but I put it up anyways. And I love that you pulled the NFT, the nutrient film tray, out of it. That's that, all that's I a think grower right there. It. That's yeah. a grower. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> NFT, um, the one thing no one can explain. You know, that's what I seem to find out of it. Yeah, it's like how's positive track work on employment? It just do. <laughs> um, so, um, as far as like people working together, um, it can happen. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. It's like, you know, you're getting too many cooks in the, in the kitchen and it'll lead to problems sometimes. Sometimes it can work out, you know, it's just, uh, getting the right people with the right goal to, uh, to do something like that. Um, a lot of old heads, man, are real paranoid. They don't, they don't trust other people. They don't trust people around the shit with as much fuckery that's been going on as far as I can remember. And it gets worse. Um, you know, um, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. Um, but you, sometimes you get like a group of friends that do trust each other that are working toward a goal that, that can make some, some cool shit happen. So, um, that's just, that's just one of them things like, 
me me personally um you know i i'm i'm pretty i'm a pretty funny guy man i ain't gonna i ain't gonna lie so like somebody just hits me up out of the blue yeah you want to do this you want to do that just old school mentality sometimes i'm like oh it's sketchy but then i have to remember it's like well it's legal and people are cool they just want to help but then i'm you know i just seen so much fucked up shit and people trying to fuck me over it so i'm like all right what's their motive behind that you know so and I, it's not just me it's like a lot of a lot of people um from the old school are like that um so it, it's a it's a really tricky thing man i gotta know somebody for a real real long time and there's gotta be a lot of trust established before you know i'm, I'm gonna you know do anything with somebody anyhow um it's one thing to you know do a little collaboration you know you send pollen or you make it whatever but um to really get in there um sharing genetics and and, and doing a, a whole program it's you know, it, it, it that would be a it'd be a rare a rare thing, especially nowadays. You know, it'd be cool though. You could get a whole lot done. It just takes the right people. Oh, yeah, well said. It's hard to find a good solid group, man. Anymore. I mean, yeah. you get you one right hand man, you you're lucky. You know what I mean? In oh, these yeah. days and times. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate your time, Duke. I know yeah, uh, if there's any other questions out there, get them in quick. Uh, we do like to respect the viewers' time. We try to keep it at three hours. Uh, but today is a special one for me. I feel like the community obviously knows why. Uh, but I believe in time, the community will also start to see why this is a special one. It's, uh, kind of hearing it from the people that have gone through it the most uh, on both sides of the spectrum. Uh, and then I guess the, the takeaway is that you still see it's with humble and grace how uh, he's able to carry himself and continue on, uh, even though bullshit uh, kicks him in the face, man. I uh, admire the way you take it on the chin, bro. Keep it moving. That's right, dude. Yeah, like I said, you got you to gotta be a rock, man. You know, just, uh, you know, you got to stay positive, whatever it is you're doing. You know, if you're doing time, make the best out every day. You only get one chance at every day. So, you know, behooves you to make the best of it, you know, just try to make, something good out of it, take something positive away from it, learn something from it, and uh, just keep moving forward. And, you know, don't don't let it don't let it ruin you. Don't let it dim your uh, dim your shine, you know. You just gotta you just gotta overcome, you know, and that's that's it. So you can either let it break you or, you know, you can let it make you stronger. So, you know, that's the that's the thing, man, is like you can sit there and grind away at me but so all they're doing is just making me sharper. <laughs> so it's whatever. If yeah, you don't pretty... quit, you can't lose, bro. <laughs> That's it, yeah. man. That's it. I'm too hard headed for that shit, you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I, I appreciate this, guys. It's been a great episode. Um, you know, it, it's real refreshing just to hear, you know, a straight shooter. So uh I appreciate mm -hmm. that, Duke. That's awesome. Uh, and people have picked up a lot of great stuff from the conversations. Uh, one little bit of housekeeping tonight. We'll be back FCP 02 at 7 p.m. on the West Coast, 10 p.m. on the East Coast. And we'll cover everything else from that. But I want to give these guys a chance to wrap that up, too. So excellent, yeah. guys. I'll just go out there the box. I'll let, the, I'll let Brian get the last word. I just want to just throw my two cents in. Nice meeting you, Duke, man. Appreciate you what too, you're doing Marco. for the yeah, what you're doing for the community, brother. And uh, definitely, I'm um, looking forward to uh, building something with you, man, for the future. I like to connect with good people and keep those connections going. So um, yeah, man. Maybe we can go down to Hopewell to the Anchor Room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have a couple beers and some double dogs or something, you know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, this was a kind of a surprise, Duke. I appreciate you last minute, you know, yeah, again, man. just coming through for the community. Uh, and I would love to extend it that, uh, you know, we'd love to have you on again where maybe we could talk specifics like you had mentioned for people that want to really get into this, uh, maybe like a step by step uh, where we've kind of planned it out a little bit instead of a last minute kind of Hail Mary. But you, you caught it today, bro. And uh, I feel like you killed it, man, uh, from a candid oh, thanks, uh, interview. Um, I, I feel like there's there's nothing better than when people are just sitting there telling you the truth, like Chad had talked about, and hey man, this is how it is. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you because it sucks. 
uh, but this is how the shit works. Um, and then taking it on the flip side and just explaining to things why people need to focus on the grocery stores instead of the hydro stores. And you've been saying that since I since I was uh, had the pleasure of meeting you, buddy. So, again, just a, a real salute to you, man. I feel like you're one of the ones that uh, definitely deserve uh, a politician esque where uh, people can vote and say, like, this is how I feel like breeding should be. This is how I feel like growers should be. And this is definitely how human beings should be in the way that they conduct and carry themselves. So thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. And like I said, anytime, dude, just give me a holler. I'm always good at impromptu stuff. Any interview or shit I've ever done or speech of, I don't rehearse it or nothing. I just, I just prefer to do it this way anyhow, you know, so. Yeah, man. Anytime, dude. Hey, hey what's happening, Philip? Right. How you yeah, doing, good? I know that's right. You on mute, there, brother Chad. I do that once every episode, and I had to wait till I'm like, okay, and with that, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. So everybody out there, enjoy. Watch this one again, and we'll catch you next week.